On returns against East Carolina and Georgia Southern have Buckley leading all of college football. Seminoles are unbeaten at 2-0, ranked second in the nation as the king of the road packs his traveling bags for the first time tonight. Tulane University has regained self-respect under Louisiana native Greg Davis, who sports a fabulous senior class passing combination. Quarterback Darren Smith hurled three touchdown strikes a week ago. Two grabbed by this man, his favorite target, Melvin Ferdinand. A 64-point explosion the past two weeks has stunned opponents like SMU's Forrest Gregg and has the Green Wave convinced of an upset against FSU tonight. Sunshine Network, Florida's best, welcomes you to the city of New Orleans and the massive Superdome. Tonight, one of America's best, the Florida State Seminoles, ranked second in all the nation, challenged the homestanding green wave of Tulane University. Good evening, hello again, and indeed, welcome to Seminole September, live pay-per-view on Sunshine Network with Keith Jones. I'm Paul Kennedy here in the Superdome, site of Super Bowls and Sugar Bowls and one of Florida State's greatest wins, the 89 Sugar Bowl, of course, when Deion Sanders saved the day. There's a cornerback right now playing a lot like Deion, two for FSU. Well, really is. You know, Sanders was a two-time All-American at Florida State. Leroy Butler last year, they think that Buckley, Terrell Buckley, may be the next one here. He's excited people with his punt returns. He's playing a very good defense defensive cornerback and they're expecting great things and getting great things from Mr. Dangerous. <laughs> the special teams have been outstanding, have they not? And Richie Andrews, the kicking specialist, is enjoying a fabulous senior year. Well, somebody asked Coach Bowden, what's wrong with Richie or what's right with Richie? And Bowden said, I don't know and I don't want to know. He hasn't talked to him about it. But basically what's happened, Paul, is Richie uh, went into weight training during the summer, did not kick as much, and his leg is much liver now and should continue to be live throughout the uh, rest of the season. Tulane is off to the good start at 2-1. and one. one of the major reasons why, their fine quarterback, Darren Smith. Well, he's a classic pro passer. He steps back, he's tall in the pocket, and he throws the ball downfield. Had well over 2,500 yards. Uh, throws through the air and he can also run you know Tulane for many years has run the option he can get out on the corner and make things happen but his strength is throwing the ball downfield Tulane plays an eight-man front defensively and Jay Rink is solid in that eight-man scheme well that eight-man scheme is a little deceiving because they will play a traditional pro type defense but Rink from his outside position they see the 10 sacks there his strength is getting up the field forcing the quarterback into or out of the pocket he has great upfield mobility our sideline reporter tonight is barry milligan hey barry it's 72 degrees air conditioned comfort indoors downstairs beautiful down here paul on the mardi grass as it's called here in the louisiana superdome kind of a carnival atmosphere as described by the seminoles but it's a situation that's been very good to florida state in the past Bobby Bowden is 5-0 indoors, and FSU has won eight straight ball games on the fake turf. And if there's one aspect that it really affects during the game, it's team speed. And, Paul, this Florida State team may be the fastest that has ever been fielded by the Tallahassee School, and that does not bode well for the Green Wave. Absolutely, Barry, and FSU looking to jump out to a fast 3-0 start. Our opening kickoff between Tulane and Florida State is next. A couple of teams with a pair of wins. Unbeaten Florida State in 2-1 two Tulane. Looking to win three games in a row. Terrence Strickland to the bottom of your picture. They're starting tailback number six. And Brandon Hamilton, a reserve cornerback to the top of your screen, will try and bring this one out of the end zone. Richie Andrews has been beating them deep. And he sends Hamilton all the way back to his own goal line. Out across the 10, the 15, ahead, oh, just shy of the 20-yard line. And from that point, Tulane will start out on offense. Tommy Henry from the secondary. Reserve quarterback made the stop for Florida State. And there you see the very dangerous senior. And Aaron Smith, 6'4", 217. The numbers on him, he's completed, Keith, 55% of his passes this year with six touchdown strikes. Complimented by Chance Miller and Terrence Strickland, Melvin Ferdinand has caught a touchdown pass in each of the last four games for Tulane as they come up to the line of scrimmage. 
Herman over the football. First play of the evening. Single setback behind Smith. And the handoff off the left side to Miller. He runs through one tackler. Gains a yard. Howard Dinkins popped in in the backfield. He got out of that tackle from the outside linebacker for Florida State. And it was the freshman, Marvin Jones, number 55, to run him out of bounds. The, the Ostazuski twins, pardon me, up front with Troy Sanders starting this evening. Dinkins, and on that play, Marvin Jones as well. Kirk Carruthers, the leading tackler. Anthony Moss complimenting that fine linebacking core. And the secondary improving two with every snap. McCorvey, Reagans, Leon Fowler, and the sensational Terrell Buckley. At a second down, we'll call it a gain of two. Again, Miller, the lone setback. Off the left side a second time. Turns the corner for another yard. And for the second time as well, it's double digits. 55, Marvin Jones, who pops him after a gain of one. Miller, a sophomore, pardon me, Keith, 5'9", 190 out last week did not play against SMU has great speed great quickness on that uh, that small frame 5'9", 190 Tulane likes to use their fullback you'll notice they go a lot of one back sets and it won't be the tailback it'll be the fullback and most times that'll be Miller Jerry Urson to the bottom of your picture number two three receivers will be out in the pattern the play called at the line of scrimmage. Smith back to throw. The blitz is on. He floats it in the flat and overshoots his intended receiver. The tight end number 82, Jeff Kenyo. Pressure from Todd McIntosh in the backfield for Smith to hurry. And it's three downs and out for Tulane. Chip Clark, just a freshman with a 37 and a half yard average set to punt to the most dangerous man in all of college football if he can get it away 10 rolls up here they come the punt tumbles end over end buckley from his 44 calls for and makes the fair catch excellent field position for florida state following the 31 yard effort and here comes brad johnson the junior out of black mountain north carolina He's been near perfection, completing 69% of his passes. He's thrown for four touchdowns and has yet to be picked off. Out of that core a week ago, Johnson found nine separate receivers. First play for Florida State, play action. Johnson rolls right, throws on the run, and he has it complete to midfield and into two-lane territory to Edgar Bennett. The fullback is Florida State's leading receiver on the year, Mike Riley made the stop, the cornerback. Dixon starts again. Robert Stevenson had taken his place while Reggie had to pull that abdominal muscle at that left tackle slot. Defensively, Rink we talked about earlier, Claymont, Treadway, and Benford will set the rest in a moment. A gain of seven. Second and three. The pitch comes to Ampley. That's a first down and more. Inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. But a great block by Mike Morris. The tight side guard, the junior at 287 pounds, leading the way, he picked up eight and the first. Nothing spectacular, just a, a good old-fashioned sweep. As we look at Burton, Stant Ryder, McDowell, the linebackers, actually McDowell is no more of a strong safety call. You see your three backs there with McCollum, Thornhill, and Riley. Thornhill very mobile back there, plays a true center field, number 33. Fire left, Dossie right. Passing situation for Johnson on first down. Deep rollout. Brink is chasing him. He throws on the run. It's complete out of bounds. A gain of about seven. Great timing round by Brad Johnson. The numbers on Johnson so far this year, and the one that has my attention is the one on the far right. Exactly. Four touchdowns, no interceptions, in the high 60s for a completion. And folks are saying, what's wrong with Brad? He doesn't look good. He looks kind of mechanical back there. He doesn't look smooth. And uh, I think that's a tribute more to Peter Tom Willis last year than a detriment or a negative comment to, uh, to Johnson this year. Florida State on its opening possession, which began at the 44. Lee for active the line of scrimmage. Great inside pursuit. Kevin Janstick was there. Andrew Treadway, number 76, the senior, 270-pound right tackle, held his ground as they stuffed Florida State for the first time tonight. No gain on the play. Thanks to that man. Well, Treadway had six tackles for a loss last year. He missed spring ball this year with an injury. Came into fall camp and 
There you see him even being a litter with a little timeout. Confusion on the field for Tulane. They have taken a timeout. We'll pause as well after this word from Pepsi. The right one. No score just underway from the Superdome in New Orleans with Barry Milligan along with Keith Jones. I'm Paul Kennedy inviting you to join us next week as Florida State returns home and we round out Seminole September against the Hokies of Virginia Tech. You can catch that game live on pay-per-view at 7 o'clock or join us throughout the state of Florida on our replay at 11 only on Sunshine Network. Florida State, which crushed these greenies a year ago, 59 to 9 in a rout in Tallahassee facing third and three. Edgar Bennett bounces outside with second effort, is close to the first down marker, although a yard shot. Rod McDowell, a Florida native from Riviera Beach, sophomore outside linebacker or rover back, made the fine tackle. Or strong safety, as it were. Ground level look, guard tackle pull Bennett over the other way. Good penetration at the point of attack by the defensive line of Tulane and good pursuit prohibits or keeps Bennett from getting that first down and coach Bobby Bowden with a with a ticklish call here with fourth and one on the plus 29. He's going for it. Warren Hart is the wingman on the right side the reserve tackle. Hey this may be a touchdown. Edgar Bennett popped him. He's down to the one yard line. Mark Thornhill the safety with a touchdown saving tackle as so often happens when the defense is bunched in tightly trying to prevent a gain of inches you gain a lot of field position well Bennett just takes it up in there you see an extra tight end in there three tight ends in the ball game great block by uh, the Florida State defense uh, offensive front and if not for Thornhill making a good strong tackle to bring him down Bennett's got touchdown number two for 90 credit Warren Hart number 84 that redshirt freshman tight end from Jacksonville with that helmet popping block it's first and goal, Florida State. Quarterback sneak nothing. It'll be second down. Brian Ryder, senior inside linebacker, number 44, the leading tackler for Tulane this year with 26 stops. There are so many seniors for Tulane, and they have such high hopes in spite of the fact they were blasted on opening night by Southwest Louisiana. Well, with Ryder and Stant, their two inside backers, and their backup, Shearer and Moore, they've got four seniors right there, two deep in the middle. Bennett and Lee in the eye. This is Amp Lee for the touchdown! A penalty marker lies on the carpet. So let us wait. Lee from a yard out. Offsides the call against Tulane will obviously be declined and the Seminoles have marched on their opening possession from their own 44 in for the score and it is Amp Lee who scored two touchdowns against the Green Wave a year ago in Tallahassee with tonight's first touchdown. Ground level look nothing fancy just everybody firing ahead you see Lee doing a good job of wrapping that ball up and Richie Andrews on for the PAT. And as he says, he splits the sticks. <laughs> Seven to nothing. Florida State timeout on the field. 10-29 remaining in this, the first quarter. For a prohibitive favorite in FSU, that is the perfect way to play on the road. An eight-play, 55-yard march officially that consumed only 329 off the clock. See Coach Bowden there sideline organization you know we talked about it earlier with Richie Andrews uh, his uh, weight regime if you will over the summer and not kicking as much uh, some folks have talked about it and I think coach Bowden and seen there with offensive coordinator uh, uh, Brad Scott it's kind of like uh, your golf swing Paul where sometimes you just kind of leave it for two or three weeks before you bring it back Andrews did not kick during the summer and uh, as coach Bowden has alluded to the media he doesn't he doesn't really want to know if there's any other secrets he'll leave it as it is there you see eight plays 55 yards almost three and a half minutes off the clock amp with his rushing first rushing touchdown of the night well a second opportunity for Terrence Strickland and Brandon Hamilton to return the kickoff of Richie Andrews who has now placed six of his last eight kicks into the end zone. 
He is drilling the football. Here he goes again with that left foot. And eight yards into the end zone. Hamilton will down it on one knee, and uh, Richie is doing his thing, and Tulane must start, Keith. First and ten from the 20. Well, Florida State actually kicking off from the 40, Paul. That offsides me and uh, uh, marked off on the kickoff. So Richie kicking off from the 40, putting it very deep in the end zone. Smith will bring on Tulane to begin their second series here of the first quarter. It was three downs and out when they opened from their 18 and a half, 19 yard line in the first possession. This is a team uh, that opened with a 48 to 6 disappointing loss for Greg Davis now in his third year and then beat Rice 21 to 10 and then Southern Methodist 43 to 7 over Forrest Greg and company last week. Chance Miller getting a line of work early and we can see why. That's a gain of six before Leon Fowler that fine sophomore free safety races up to crack him in the headgear. Exploded off the left side. Darren Shoulders the senior left tackle and Charles Hobbs the senior left guard did a fine job on that left side. The Tulane will come after you. There's no doubt about it. They, they know how to play football. They love playing in the dome. They feel like it's to their advantage. Coach Bowden talked about that during the week. It's kind of like playing a football game in a basketball arena. And uh, they won't quit on you. Ferdinand and Urson to the bottom of your screen on second and four. Miller off the right side. A first down. Ahead with a 35-yard line. Weiss, the strong safety on the stop. He has broken more than a couple of tackles early. They're gaining 10, two snaps. And Chance Miller, that 190-pound second-year player for Tulane, picked up 16 yards. Well, as a freshman, he carried the ball 76 times for 332 yards. There you can see a good look at him. 5'9", 190 pounds. And as we talk about, very quick with great speed. Two Ursons, really to the bottom of your picture. Jerry, their cousins, in the slot. Ferdinand to the top of your screen. Miller again, the lone setback. Smith, the short drop. Floats it off to the left side and has it complete. Ferdinand had to come back for the football and makes the catch after a pickup of five. Between Ferdinand there, a senior, and Smith, his quarterback, they have worked together now for four years and know each other so very well. Well, there you see his very respectable 16-plus yards per catch, three touchdowns. They're just trying to isolate out here. Had a combination route on the outside, coming in and going out. That's really a possession pass more than anything, Paul, a way to get the ball in the hands of a very dangerous receiver in a very, very uh, safe situation. The Orleans senior lined up to the right side, as you see. Smith wants to go airport again. Backs it, fires it through, and Ferdinand fighting toward that first down marker. John Weiss from Thomasville, Georgia, number 44, was on his back. They gained four. If it works once, it ought to work twice. Same play, other side. Combination route where the outside receiver goes in and the slot man or inside receiver goes out. Nothing real complicated, but uh, Tulane will give you a lot of looks. They'll give you a lot of different formations and a lot of motion. Here's an end zone look at it. Just a nice three-step drop and lay the ball out. The outside receiver comes in. You can see him there going left to right. Ferdinand goes out. Pick up a four. They need but a yard here to earn the first and maintain possession. Do they hand the ball to Miller with two tight ends? Yes, that's the call. Miller has the first down. Explodes across the midfield stripe and carries it to the Florida State 49. He gains seven yards. And Fowler, the free safety, was forced to make the tackle again. Isolation look, you're going to see a good effort right here. Good, basic, sound football. The ball on the outside, you see him just breaking through, right off tackle. Excellent tackle, by the way, there by number three for Florida State Fowler. Already 26 yards in the first half for Chance Miller. The sixth play of this possession, trailing in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. Tulane, as you see the football, just into Florida State territory. Smith, again the short drop. Hot throws complete. Willie Erson, a true freshman, has another first down at the Florida State 39-yard line. An 11-yard gain, and Darren Smith is right on the money. He's hot. Erson's going to be working right to left in the lower part of your screen. You see him cocked. He should have thrown it just a hair earlier. If he had, Erson might have had a chance to gather the ball and then do something with it as it was. Weiss right on him. 
You see him at 6'1. I think we're Chiron a little bit off. I believe Willie runs about 177. And Smith provides a good target for Smith. Yeah, he is now three of four key for 19 yards. And first down. Inside handoff Miller. A tough three yards off that right side. Did you see Florida State walk up the corners to the wideouts? Are you getting inside the plus 40? Tulane is. A little less field to try to defend. Plus that man right there, Miller, on his sixth carry now for well, well over 30 yards. He's able to, to work inside those tackles. You get the corners up, maybe move the safeties up a little bit and try to hit him a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Like Brad Johnson, his counterpart, Darren Smith, tall, 6'5". He can throw for big yardage. And he has experience. Down a touchdown in the first quarter. He fires to the near boundary. <laughs> Another completion. This one to Jerry Urson. Weish, as you see, on the stop. A couple of Urson cousins are having a busy first quarter here in the Superdome. Number one is Willie, and number two is Jerry. Here we get a good look at the footwork of Deron Smith. See that nice three-step plant and drop. You don't draw it up any prettier than that. Excellent, excellent timing. Excellent coverage by Florida State. But Paul, you can't defend it when it's thrown that well. Four out of five and facing third and four. The blitz appears as if it's coming. You may have seen Kurt Carruthers cheat up. Indeed, he does come. And Chance Miller cuts back and earns the first down. Sometimes the blitz gets you, and sometimes you get the blitz. That is the case here. That is twice in this drive that Tulane has converted on third down. Good look at a left step block by all the offensive linemen and just a missed tackle by Fowler. He knows it. Help from the rest of his buddies, but not before a good effort by Miller converts the first down. Now he has already carried, has Miller, seven times for 38 yards, and he picked up eight and a half there. Three receivers to the near right side. Miller right up the middle. Howard Dinkins, the outside linebacker, made the stop. The third leading tackler for Florida State on the year with 17 stops coming into this game. That's six more, second and four. And now the football is at the 18-yard line. What a march Tulane is putting on. Just good upfield movement by the offensive line of Tulane and Chance, that 5'9 frame just kind of working behind him is Chance Miller. And there you see it, eight rushes, 45 yards, about seven of them coming on this drive. Both Ursons to the near side. Miller, why not? It's been working. Marvin Joe stepped up in there. Joe Ostazewski from his nose guard position to the linebacker and down lineman. Stopped him after a gain of four, and uh, the referee will stop the clock and will bring on the chains and see if this is a first down as we take another look. Just a good play, actually, by Jones to elude the guard coming up field on him to hold him hopefully short if you're a Florida State fan. Tulane not doing anything real fancy, Paul, just coming uh, right between the tackles and a couple of times outside with Miller right at this Florida State defense. Fritz Grass heads the crew this evening. You see the rest of our men in the striped shirts. It's third and uh, about a foot to go for Tulane. An important play here. This may be four down territory. I would think if you're a 26 point underdog. Very much so. Tulane converting almost 50% of their third downs through the first three ball games. Jerry Urson left. Ferdinand right. Miller. Has the first down. Marvin Jones, the freshman linebacker, could not stop him. Charles Herman, the center, and the right guard, Sam Atkins, a junior and 288 pounder, along with Mike Millich, a senior right tackle, created just enough of a surge to earn the first down. Herman, the center, not that big at 240, but the tackles go 273 and 267, the guards 267 and 288, so they've got plenty of beef up front. A four receiver alignment as you watch Smith pull the play at the line of scrimmage. The quick drop over the middle. Urson intercepted. Terrell Buckley in and out of the hands of an open Willie Urson. And Buckley makes the big play right there where he needed to be. 
And Smith was frustrated, for he knew that it was first and goal if Urson had held on. Urson frustrated, too. Very well thrown. Three-step, quick drop. Urson's wide open. The ball slightly behind, behind, but catchable. And you see good concentration by Buckley to bring it in. Florida State starting deep in a hole, but dodging a bullet. Just the second incomplete pass for Smith. And for Buckley, he has his second interception. Florida State operating from its own end zone. And it's the rugged Paul Moore, the junior fullback from Miami, who pounds it out of there. Bobby Bowden and his offensive coordinator, Brad Scott, say that Moore is the toughest inside runner Florida State has. Has really developed his pass catching skills as well, Paul. Very dangerous out of the backfield. Florida State's only gone to him a couple of times early this season. But uh, he, like Bennett, can catch the ball well coming out of the backfield. Do not put it past the king of the road to throw deep from this situation. Second down. Whoa! Moore was fortunate. That was not a safety. He stumbled on the AstroTurf, and Jay Rink, the left end, fell on top of it. That was a deep handoff working right. Working very deep in the backfield. Rink, you see on the right part of your screen, just go takes an inside rush and completely gets around number 73 for Florida State, Reggie Dixon. There you see why he's so dangerous. Just 244 pounds, but very strong and able to get upfield very quickly. Baker right, Dossie left. Needing nine on third down. Florida State will be content to hand it to Lee, and Lee cannot turn the corner. Just trying to buy room for John Wimberly, the punter. Rod McDowell made the stop and a big hand from the Tulane faithful as the Greenies have held up as you and forced the punt. Wimberley, the sophomore, with that 38-yard average, close to, will be kicking to Terrence Strickland, whose longest return this year has been of 42 yards. Wimberley hangs it very high. Here comes Strickland from the Florida State 44 to the 40 and down to the 39-yard line. And we'll return with more of the first quarter. Florida State leading 7-0. Well, we'll stay right here. You saw with us the flag on the field. Fritz Grass with the call. And that'll cross Tulane 15 yards. We'll be back in just a moment. Tulane had held the ball for a dozen snaps before the interception. The clip. Marched off back to the 46. Chance Miller dancing outside. Hot speed. Midfield 49, 48 yard line. Marvin Jones is running sideline to sideline for Florida State. The linebacker. Well, the first true freshman to really play much on the defensive side since Ron Simmons. Jones having to play. You see in the left part of his screen there. Miller with great speed from the fullback position, almost able to turn the corner. Takes it up inside, bounces it back out. Already carried the ball 10 times, 11th carry correction, 55 yards, and we're not through the first quarter yet. Jerry Erson, Melvin Ferdinand, quick receivers, the top of your screen, and a new tailback. Took a pretty good hit that Harold Dennis, the sophomore from St. James, Louisiana, wears number 28 on his back. And again, it was Jones, along with Kirk Carruthers, the two-year letterman, who hammered it. Dennis was thought to be suffering from mononucleosis earlier this week, but fortunately for he and his team, they discovered it was just a bad case of the flu. He has bounced back and is seeing action this evening. He's a guy who's never been stopped for a loss in his young college career. He hits it up in there pretty good. On third and needing a pair, Chance Miller off the left side. Again, the hole is there, and again, it's a first down. Back with more after this. We're back as the gun goes off. They haven't run a play. That's the end of the first quarter. Tulane may trail, but they have played very, very well. 
We'll return with the second quarter. It is Florida State leading seven to nothing, but Tulane showing it can hang tough with the Seminoles. As the second quarter begins, it's Florida State leading seven to nothing. Chance Miller off the left side picks up three more yards. You know, Keith, Tulane has now run 16 plays to only three for Florida State. This is the play we just missed. And most of them looking like this. <laughs> With just a simple Smith running three steps and handing the ball off to Chance Miller and him going somewhere in between the tackles or bouncing it out for six or eight more. Ferdinand left. Jerry Erson right. Chance Miller right. Two, three. The helmet comes out of the pack. One of Bobby Bowden's concerns as Anthony Moss gets off the pile was the fact that Tulane had seniors on that offensive front and shoulders the tackle, hops the guard, and Millage the other tackle with two juniors and Herman and Atkins up front, center and guard respectively, who'd seen a lot of action going up against the defensive front in the two Ostazewskis and Troy Sanders, who were not as experienced. Well, this Tulane front knows how to pass block, and in this particular scheme, they know how to run block or proven they can run block. The draw. Miller. And they read that perfectly. A gain of a yard. One thing Tulane is doing is keeping Florida State's explosive offense off the field. A team which scored 48 points a week ago against Georgia Southern and 45 on opening night against East Carolina. A team that has scored 12 touchdowns in two games. Tulane was fourth and four and a half or five. Greg Davis there electing to punt. Ball sitting on Florida State's uh, approximately 37 yard line. Clark is an accomplished cop and corner kicker. He's killed three inside the 20 this year. Trying to kick it that way. He may get number four. Look at this. That is down inside the 20. Florida State's back up to its nine yard line. An excellent kick by the freshman. Florida State's previous possession began at its one yard line when Terrell Buckley's diving interception prevented a two lane touchdown. Florida State managed to gain but four yards in three snaps. It now finds itself inside its own 10. This is not the field position that uh, Brad Johnson's accustomed to receive and Casey Weldon is the new quarterback as coach Bobby Bowden gets him in there early while the game is still on the line and the Seminoles leading by a touchdown. Lee play action to him. Weldon fires off his back foot and overshoots everybody looking for a very well defended Lawrence Dawson. The last time Casey Weldon played against Tulane was last year. There's his 90s numbers. His 89 numbers against uh, Tulane last year Paul read something like three of four for three touchdowns and 161 yards passing. Amp Lee the recipient of one of those 88 yards on a screen pass. So uh, Florida State and Coach Bowden coming with the with the rifleman, at least with uh, good marksmanship experience against Tulane. As Brad Johnson looks on, and he'll be back in the game. This is Lee darting off the left side and into the waiting arms of Kevin Janstrick. A 259-pound left tackle, number 55 in your picture. And it's a third down situation again for Florida State, third and eight. End zone look. We've seen this play before. Lee just a little slow getting to the hole. It formed a little quicker than he read it. And a lot of greenies there to meet him. Third down and quite a few. Ampley, five carries, 19 yards. Kevin Knox, a freshman wide receiver at the top of your picture. The veteran senior in Dawson to the bottom. Golden rolls this way. At the boundary, him then. Throws it complete first down. A great catch on a forced pass by Lawrence Dossing. How in the world Casey Weldon found him? That's miraculous. Weldon was on the verge of surrendering and going out of bounds. Well, Dossie gets good credit here. Watch the left side of your screen. Dossie does a curl in. He's open right there. Can't get the ball to him. Works back outside. Gets himself free. Weldon out of bounds. His body out of bounds. Throwing it sidearm connects with the senior from Dothan. The 24th straight game now that Lawrence Dawson has caught a pass for Florida State. In the second quarter, leading 7-0. 
The inside handoff to Edgar Bennett. And the junior from Jacksonville attracts the crowd, working behind Robbie Baker, the sophomore center, and Hayward Haynes, the left guard. How about Hayward Haynes, number 65 for Florida State, who played the entire game a week ago with a broken hand? Actually, a broken thumb. He broke it in the Georgia Southern game, played the whole second half. In fact, Coach Bowden was looking at the films and said, well, he didn't play very well. And then he found out he was playing with a broken thumb. Played all of last week in there now. They've slid Robert Stevenson in there for this snap with him. Well, the great bootleg action. Uh, wasn't a pretty pass. Dossie has it, though, and spins ahead across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Lenzer Burton, the rover back from Boca Raton, Florida, belted him out of bounds. A knuckleball, and it'll show up in the stats as a gain of 12, nonetheless. As you say, not very pretty play action away, naked bootleg to our right as we look at it. Dawson makes a good catch of a duck and then ducks a defender to pick up uh, four or five or six more. He made a solid quarterback and Mike Riley, number 41, missing. Dawson following that dozen yard pickup to the bottom of your screen. The toss to Ampley working this way, gets a block. Darts ahead, 45, midfield to two-lane territory. Again, it was Mike Morris, that junior tight side guard, who pulls out there to lead the way and springs amply for his biggest gain of the evening, a pickup of 15. Watch number 60 coming right at you from the tight guard position. Makes a good downfield block. Doesn't have to be pretty, but makes it effectively and Lee able to accelerate through that lane. Picks up the first jump, first down. Florida State 7. Two lane nothing. And play on a one yard run on an opening march for Florida State. Weldon has a moving now. This is Lee in the flat. Trying to get away from Riley. Gets away from him, but not Windsor Burton. Burton the rover or drop in. Over to make the stop. Again, end zone look. Five step drop. Weldon leads lead back up field. And as a result, uh, a lot of struggling and breaking a tackle and a pickup of zero. Here's a good look at Lindsey Burton, 6'1", 206, a senior. A converted defensive back. Now playing a drop end position. This is the ninth play of the march. Weldon. Oh, good catch, Lee. 45. 42 yard line. Or rather, Edgar Bennett. He's so slim now. <laughs> I pick up that two. I think it's Ampley. This is an outstanding grab. He had to reach for it. Keith caught it on his fingertips. Well, Casey will tell you he did a good job of leading him upfield. And, of course, Bennett will tell you he made a great catch. The two uh, ended up connecting well, and Bennett, uh, again, showing that versatility. 6'1", maybe about 215 now. We're not sure, but Florida State's number one. Receiver. This drive again at the Florida State nine. The Seminoles marching on two lane. The blitz is on and uh, over the middle. Dawson read the blitz and ran that slant in to save Walden, who ended up on the seat of his pants as the middle linebacker Pat Stamp blitzing through, knocked him down hard. Well, here's where the uh, hot receiver comes into play. Stamp comes in clean. Dawson breaks off his pattern and they convert the first down for Florida State. You're going to see why quarterbacks in the pros are highly paid, and in college they're very well respected. That's the first. That's what a first down looks like to a quarterback, Paul. Weldon is now five out of six for 31 yards, all on this drive. Play action. He wants more. Going upstairs and throwing deep for the first time. Fryer has it. 13 yard line. Dowden made the stop on the far boundary, trying to throw the ball with some zip on it. Do you think his elbows give him a bit of trouble? It's wrapped there. It was pretty enough to get there, but it didn't have a lot of zip to well, it. He's not throwing the ball extremely well. Here you're going to see Fryer, number 12, working in the right hand. This is the corner route. He brings it in towards the goalpost and then back to the corner. Excellent, excellent route. Good delivery. And the Live Oak Swanee High School native brings it in for a big first down and a big completion. Biggest gain of the night. Matt Fryer with a 25-yard reception. First and 10 goals. Ampley will lose yardage. Crashing through Andrew Treadway, number 76, and he's all pumped up. 
This is a team in Tulane that held its last two opponents, Rice and SMU, to less than 100 yards rushing. Regardless of the opposition, that was a feat which went noticed here, for that was the first time in school history that they had shut down the running game of foes back to back. Treadway and Claymont, the two uh, defensive tackles in that 4-4 uh, modified scheme, a big reason for that two ball. Fryer out this way. Dossie in the slot. Bootleg, welded, run pass option, gunning, caught Dossie. Trying to go back inside and can't to the nine yard line and he really took a pounding. Mark Thornhill, the free safety, one of a trio of two-lane secondary men who let him have it. Thornhill's a Florida native, too, from Pensacola in Escambia High School. Injured much of last year is number 33, Thornhill. Actually ended up with a medical red shirt. You're going to see him come up and really put a good stick on Dawsey. Notice the uh, rib pads that Dawsey's got on there as well as the extra protection. There you see the Pensacola, Florida native in Thornhill. Three years, including this year, still left. Just a sophomore. Twin receivers, Dossie now in motion, penalty markers down. Florida State may have taken too much time. The ball is at the nine yard line and Florida State was facing a third and seven, needing to march it inside the two. Dead ball procedures, somebody moved along the line of scrimmage. And third and seven becomes third and a dozen. You're getting on farther into the season, fourth game for Tulane, third game for Florida State. Those types of penalties, those types of mental mistakes, uh, you hope if you're a head coach in Bobby Bowden that they've uh, they've kind of gotten out of the way now. You've got all those behind you. Florida State not successful there, though, in executing well. Casey Weldon has done a tremendous job of putting together this 12-play mark. He's at a crossroads, however, at third and ten. A little cross block there. Edgar Bennett inside the 10 to the 8 yard line and it's field goal time. Uh, there is a flag however laying back at the 16 yard line and the preliminary indication is that the ball will go against Florida State. Consecutive penalties are cooling off this March. You're going to see this cross action coming right at you. Guard tackle backside tackle pulling and Bennett doing a good job of getting right on the hip but a penalty will bring that one back. Kevin Mancini was the big number 67. All 272 pounds of him from Brandon, Florida, over in the Bay Area. Some discussion here, I think, from Tulane as to whether they want to take the penalty or take the play. You know, that means holding, of course. We'll bring up fourth down as they decline it. Fourth down. You don't want to give Florida State too many shots. And here is Richie Andrews, a perfect three of three in placements. He's hit from 29 yards out twice and once from 32. This one will be a 24-yard effort, his shortest of the year. The left-footed specialist angled to his left. The snap, the spot, and the kick is away. And right down the middle, good. It is Florida State leading in the second quarter over homestanding Tulane, 10 to nothing. Back after this word from Keystone. Bottle beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Richie Andrews has just drilled a 24-yarder, Barry Milligan, to make it a 10-0 Seminole lead. Just 10-0, Paul, but this has been a game of high-scoring contest between Florida State and Tulane in the past. FSU averages nearly 47 points a game historically against the Green Wave with a high of 59 last year. Brandon Turner, the cornerback, the 5-foot, 9-inch freshman, set to receive Andrews. End over end, very high kick. Look at this. Five yards into the end zone. Every one has been into the end zone tonight. Tulane begins at its 20. The last time Andrews forced him into that position, they marched the length of the field. Well, not only that, Richie was kicking from the blue from the blue tees. He wasn't up at, uh, at the white tees that you and I play. He was from the blue tees, 35-yard line, five yards deep. There you see the scoring drive. I think interesting seven minutes, a little over seven minutes on the drive, and of course Richie converting that 24-yard field goal. 14 plays. We've had a lot of long series. Tulane, two series before this. 12 plays. Florida State, 14 on that instance. 
Darren Smith at the helm. Jerry Erson to the top of your picture. Chance Miller, the fullback of a big first half, continues to show what he's made of across the 25 out to the 26 yard line. Leon Fowler gave him a forearm shot that knocked him off his feet. That Fort Myers sophomore can really hit in the secondary. Good upfield blocking by Tulane's lineman to cut off Florida State's pursuing linebackers, forcing the free safety and Fowler to come up. Fowler starting and playing. John Davis back in Tallahassee injured his shoulder last week. Did not even make the trip to New Orleans. 16 carries, 69 yards for Miller and more. Add to it now as he rolls across the 30-yard line with the first down. Seven more yards, 69 and seven, 76 yards in the first half. This is the top rushing effort against Florida State this season. Well, don't think that Miller uh, will back down later in the third quarter or even in the fourth. Very well conditioned, very strong athlete for his size, and off last week, resting as it were, coming back tonight. Play action. Smith looks the other way. Now pressure. He has to come underneath. Throwing to his tight end, Jonathan Pierce, on the safety valve. They turn that into a game of about six or seven. Sophomore inside linebacker Bryce Abbott from Tifton, Georgia, made the stop for Florida State. Smith nearly took Pierce's arm off with of that pass. That's the first ball that Jonathan Pierce, number 48, the tight end, has caught. You're going to see him get into trouble, work up in the pocket. He's very tall, and then he's going to unload on Pierce. <laughs> he had to stop and gather himself. Abbott, number 23 for Florida State, coming up for the tackle. Florida State jumped. Tulane jumped. Troy Sanders' move was their motion along the Let's line see which one of us are right. Number 72 to tackle for Tulane. Brian Shoulders down in his stance, reared up. Florida State coming across. Is it, is it the play-by-play -play or the color? Looks to be the color guy this time. Much to my chagrin. Darren Shoulders moving. Okay, you look at a good look at it. There you see Shoulders moving up. Number 62 for Florida State, Troy Sanders, coming across to make contact to get the penalty. A uh, big 273-pound guy goes back to that huddle and tries to go unnoticed. He's a leader on their line, is Darren Shoulders, starting for the third year. Smith, again, the quick drop. Fires. Ferdinand comes back to get it. Blake about a yard shy of the first down. Ahead to the 42-yard line. Ferdinand with a pair of touchdowns last week against SMU, and the Mustangs gave him a lot of room to operate. Again, nothing very fancy. In fact, we have not seen anything very complicated from Tulane. They're one-back sets, they're out routes, and Chance Miller right, left, and up the middle. They pull him to add a tight end. Pino and Pierce, two tight ends in there on third and needing a yard. Miller gets the call, and I don't know. In fact, I don't think he earned the first down. A great stuff job by Florida State. Sitting and waiting. Ken Alexander, the freshman linebacker, right there in your picture, number 36, hopped up in there, put his helmet in there, and indeed, Florida State did a great job on third and short, credit Alexander out of Austin, Texas, with a big play in his first year for Florida State. Clark kicking for the third time. He's had one of 33, killed one inside the 20. A low, tumbling punt. He kicked it out of bounds, and there's timeout on the field. We'll return after this word from Florida's finest supermarket. It's got to be Gooding. down Brad Johnson is back into the game and fires to tight end Dave Roberts on the little rollout as we take another look naked bootleg if you will but the third time we've seen that tonight now we're going to throw back inside to the trailing Roberts the top from the tight end position you may be wondering why we saw Casey Weldon it was predetermined we now understand up here that uh, Weldon would play the majority of the second quarter regardless of what was happening on the field First and ten, leading by ten. Here comes the screen pass, which has worked all year long. And opponents have enough film on it. And Sean Jackson, the New Orleans native, and his first reception tonight is hemmed in, knocked down, and a penalty marker falls with him. 
While they discuss Jackson, as you say, from New Orleans, Florida State looks like they're on a clipping infraction. Had a big game last week. 11 carries, 120 yards, including a, a one of, a, of about 53. And uh, he's really pumped to come in here and play in the Dome. In fact, uh, a couple of uh, the papers said that he was most excited about coming back. He'd never been in the, in the Superdome to play, had uh, Jackson, and uh, very excited about coming back as the number two tailback. Let's take a look here, see if you can see where the clipping comes from. You're going to see a lot of penetration by the green shirts. They're going to work up field. What you want to look for is a white shirt coming down on the back side of one of those green, maybe right there on the left-hand side about the 42-yard line, or possibly coming up right there on about the 48-yard line. Yeah, We've got 48. it frozen. The offensive line for Bobby Bowden juggled just a bit here. Reggie Dixon is working with Mike Morris on the tight side. Kevin Mancini and Robert Stevenson, the tackle and guard respectively, our team, with Baker over the football. Pretty good looking front five for Brad Johnson. Up by 10, 142 remaining in this the first half. Here's Sean Jackson. Sweeping left to the 30. 33 yard line. From St. Augustine High School here. He along with the freshman classmate Chris Coward signed by the Seminoles a year ago. Lindsay Burton on the stop that time for Tulane. Coach Bowden was talking about Sean Jackson this week as we see Casey here on the sidelines. Saying he looks an awful lot like Sammy Smith. Not quite as fast, but just as big and seemingly just as elusive. We near the one minute mark. Johnson, one down. Could be sacked. The first sack of the night belongs to Tulane's Ray Benford. The junior right in. Pressure's going to come from the right. Johnson tries to step up, but you see Benford coming from that right defensive end position, just able to motor around with good quickness. Gets a little help on the tail end there by a couple of uh, friends. And Johnson goes down, brings up third and a whole bunch. There's timeout on the field with 53 seconds remaining. Tulane has called it with Florida State facing third and 29. We'll return with more right after this. A Florida State scoring march in the first quarter. Eight plays, 55 yards. Capped by Ampley and then Richie Andrews from 24 yards out. It's 10 to nothing, Florida State. Join us Monday night for the Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine. Welcome the Giants game tomorrow in the middle of it. Here comes Sean Jackson, a stiff arm, frees him with a 30, up to the 35-36. That plays to Tulane's advantage, for he rolls out of bounds. And the senior left cornerback, Sheldon McCullum, from Titusville, Florida, made the stop for Tulane. McCullum showing he's a senior and a little, a little savvy, and unfortunately, Sean Jackson showing that he's a freshman. Needed to keep in bounds, needed to either force Tulane to use a timeout or keep the clock running. In fact, it does look like Tulane has taken a timeout. Jackson doesn't look real fast starting out, but he's very lanky, very deceptive in those moves. He's eating up some good ground. And right here, Sean, you need to take it back inside. You see him trying to hold up there, but not before McCullum gets him close enough to throw him out. Terran Strickland. In lone safety, a 10-man front for the two-lane greenway. John Wimberly to punt for the second time. He hit this one. Strickland calls for it and makes the fair catch at his 29-yard line. And from that position, Darren Smith will have 39 seconds to drive the greenway, at least in the field goal range for Gary Butler. Smith number four on most of Tulane's passing statistical records. Well over uh, 3,200 yards in passing, number four in completions and, uh, and attempts. Of course, their leader, Florida State fan, since uh, Tulane and Florida State have played home and home in the last seven years. Remember a gentleman by the name of Terrence Jones, well over 7,000 yards of career passing yardage. 
who are almost five-man secondary now for Florida State. Nolan Smith is going airborne. He throws a boundary out, and it's incomplete. Nearly picked off. Buckley wanted it. You see him shrug. Oh, yeah, he knew I was going that way. The pass intended for Ferdinand. Buckley has that confidence that a cornerback needs on the field. I saw on Ferdinand, good route, good upfield movement, and he's going to plant and turn it out. The ball thrown a little bit late, but Buckley with a great break actually has it in his hands, Paul, and cannot come down with it. Ferdinand replaced by Strickland. To the near side, Willie Erson. To the far side, Jerry Erson. Strickland in the slot. Miller the lone setback from Smith. 30 seconds remaining. Trying to fire it out of the backfield. He missed times his effort to Smith, or Miller rather, and it's incomplete. And there are 28 seconds to go. Carl Simpson, the right defensive tackle. The sophomore was applying pressure. Look and for, uh, may have screwed things up for Tulane. Look for Florida State to probably come with pressure again, and then look for Florida State to call timeout if they're successful in holding Tulane either through a, a running play or if they're fortunate enough to get an incomplete pass, trying to set up the punt return. Let's see what happens. Smith is misfired on back-to-back -back passing attempts of the little draw, and that is going nowhere to Miller. He is swarmed under. Anthony Moss was there for Florida State, as was Reggie Freeman. It was Freeman who hit him first. And Seminoles listening very well to Coach Jones because they take a timeout. They burn the timeout. You know, Tulane only held that ball for 15 seconds. They picked up the football with 38 seconds to go. And as Bobby Bowden looks at the clock, they turn it back over with 23 seconds to go. Incomplete to Ferdinand to the left, trying to get Chance Miller out to the right. Simple play up the middle with a timeout call, and I think that equals 15 seconds. And now you have allowed Terrell Buckley an opportunity to do what he does best, and that is break a game wide open. It's 10 to nothing here. And that'll help Clark's yardage. Chip Clark, the punter. Pick that one a country mile. That is a 71-yard punt. One for the record books for Tulane with 12 seconds remaining. Buckley came up from his safety position, Keith, as if uh, expecting Tulane to fake it. Well, Florida State's coach is obviously calling uh, uh, on a safe, safety type play. In other words, not allowing Tulane the opportunity to fake it. Clark, by the way, the freshman, Paul, got uh, or took away the punting chores from Deron Smith. Smith, a punter his freshman year, punted some last year. Twelve seconds to go. Brad Johnson at quarterback. Edgar Bennett running out the clock. And timeout taken with five seconds remaining. Brian Ryder, the left inside linebacker, in on the tackle. And that'll do it. The first half is over, and the king of the road has to like what he sees. Probably the best effort by Tulane this year. Still finds the green wave. Shut out in the first half. Trailing coach Bowden and his second-ranked Seminoles 10 to nothing. We have played two quarters in the Superdome in New Orleans, and we'll return with our halftime show after this word from Ray Bad by Bausch and Lowe. Welcome back to the Crescent City of New Orleans. We're at halftime where Bobby Bowden, second ranked Seminoles, lead the homestanding two lane Green Wave. By the sake of an amply touchdown scamper and a Richie Andrews field goal. And by the way, if you are curious about Chip Clark's 71-yard punt a moment ago, we just went to the record books. That's the sixth longest in Tulane history. A 71-yard boomer. Hard to believe that uh, there have been five other kicks longer than that. The longest was of 87 yards by O.J. Key kicked against the Florida Gators. Welcome back to the Seminoles. Uh, <laughs> 
the uh, Superdome. It's almost the Seminole Dome, is it not? The way the Knowles have played in this facility. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Uh, Florida State leading 10 to nothing. A big third down play on that opening drive. And, uh, well, here is Ampley busting one. This would take him all the way down, 28 yards, all the way down inside the five-yard line. Actually, Edgar Bennett there almost getting in for the score. Good tackle by the Tulane backfield. And Florida State follows that up very quickly with Ampley going over from about the one and a half. Yeah, an eight play 55 yard march. It was seven to nothing Knowles. Chance Miller had a big first half, 19 carries, close to 75 yards. Well, and you see what they did most of the time. They ran him inside. He had the option to bounce outside if he had the opportunity, and they were very successful converting a lot of those plays. It's a 10 to nothing football game here. Both teams already on the field. Watch Terrell Buckley save a touchdown. Well, these things happen, a miscue by the wide receiver, allowing the ball to be back up in the air, and Buckley able to corral it there at the one. Florida State starting deep, but able to thwart the drive. We'll be back with the second half after this. We welcome you back to the third quarter here in the Superdome in New Orleans, where uh, quickly they have begun the second half of play. The opening kickoff returned by Shannon Baker, 28 yards. And now up the gut, a gain of one by Edgar Bennett in second and nine, Florida State. To the bottom of your picture, Lawrence Dossie. Up top, that fine possession receiver, Matt Fryer, who had the big gate in the first half. Here's Brad Johnson looking toward his tight end, Reggie Johnson. And uh, did he or did he not catch it? Bobble it a bit. It is ruled incomplete up at the 47 yard line. Saw Johnson saying something to Johnson, i.e., Reggie, to Brad right as they came up to the line, and Brad throwing the ball to Reggie, but unfortunately not able to corral it. A couple of interesting things on the stats. Look in your lower right hand side 15 minutes and 29 seconds of possession for Tulane, and about halfway down on your left hand side, Florida State with about 180 yards of total offense, although Johnson four or five. Only 24 yards. That's Am Lee in the slot at the bottom of your picture. Johnson floats it down the middle, nearly intercepted. He was hunting Lee all the way. Never took his eyes off of him. And Mark Thornhill, the free safety, number 11, he followed Brad the whole way. Watch. He picks up Lee right at the snap and follows Lee's, him down the field. Lee's also going to get bumped right about there. No call. Pretty nicely thrown ball, but a great job by McDowell, number 11, of getting in the way. Strickland is set to field the punt by John Wimberlin. Florida State leading 10 to nothing. A big rush was on, and Wimberley hit a beautiful punt. It takes a Florida State roll inside the 30 and the 25, and uh, Reggie Freeman marks it dead at the 23, the two-lane 23. A 36-yard punt with a world of hang time. Florida State was very balanced on offense. 95 yards on the ground, 85 yards through the air. And for Tulane, 76 yards on the ground, 36 yards through the air. And it would have been so much more had Willie Erson held on to that post pattern that would have set up first and goal. A bit about a 20-yard gain. And uh, Tulane might very well have, well, at least three on the board. Out of that spread formation. And in motion, Jeff Kinyo, the tight end, the lead blocker for Chance Miller. And do you think the Seminoles made an adjustment at halftime? Howard Dinkins right off the bat, along with Joe Ostrzewski, the outside linebacker and nose guard effectively this time. Stuff, the man in Miller who gained 74, 75 yards in the first half alone. Tulane rushed the ball but 20 times. Miller had 19 of them, and they opened up the third quarter the very same way. A good job by Dinkins of shedding the blocker and getting upfield. Florida State stunning that time. Defensive lineman moving to the left, allowing Dinkins to get free, bring him down for about a yard loss. Jerry Erson along with Ferdinand, top of the screen. Smith steps up away from pressure, and it's almost intercepted. Billy Reagans may have had a touchdown. It ricocheted off his shoulder pads at the 29-yard line. There was nothing but uh, AstroTurf in front of him. Worst place in the world you can hit a strong safety. Trust me, I know, and that's right in his hand. Good job by the secondary. Jones with nowhere to go, really. Smith, excuse me. 
and uh, Reagan steps up, hits him just right square between the one and the five, maybe just a little bit more to the one side. He is as mad as he can be with himself, replaced by John Weish in the secondary. Third and 11, Smith off his back foot, but throwing deep, overshoots Willie Erson by 10, 15 yards. Good man-to-man -man defensive pressure by Errol McCorvey, the left cornerback. He was stride for stride with Erson. And that's four in a row now that Darren Smith is thrown incomplete. He has certainly cooled off after a hot start. Florida State coming with some stunts. Kirk Carruthers, number 45, blitzing, pressure on the quarterback, harassing him. Florida State changing it up in the third quarter. Remember Clark's last effort, as you see the right of your screen, was of 71 yards. Nearly had that one blocked by Steve Gilmer. This is Buckley. Takes a deep turn to pick up the wall. Gets one block. Dodges a second tackler. They may call that block a clip as Buckley finally goes down. He doesn't go down. He's refusing to, but the whistle is finally blown. Timeout on the field. 10 to nothing, Florida State. But there is a penalty marker. We'll pick that up in a moment. Is this a clip, Keith Jones? Watch number 15, Reagans. The key is getting your head across the body. He successfully does that. That's not a clip where I come from. Florida State with a little bit of a bad call there. Going to back them up to their own 13-yard line. Where Darren they begin Davis. this drive. Excuse me, Paul. Darren Davis, number 91, the defensive end, was the man who had that wicked payback from a frustrated Billy Reagans. You know, he was all fired up after missing. The interception that may have gone the distance for a touchdown. You don't get very many of those open chances back there in the secondary, and you have to convert them, or they leave you behind. Brad Johnson, couple of play picks, and now scrambling around. Here come the green jerseys. Throws it, incomplete. Lawrence Dawson nearly saved the day. Ray Benford, a right end, a junior, 238 pounds, that is quite mobile, was chasing him. Linebacker Brian Ryder and company have held one of America's top offensive machines in check tonight. Watch the good pressure from the left-hand side that Tulane brings, and you're going to see pretty good mobility by Johnson. He looks like he's just trying to throw this one away, and Dalsey almost comes up with the catch. Ryder there, the senior from Massachusetts all the way down in Bayou Country, getting his 229-pound frame up field. From Nantucket, Ampley breaks the tackle across the 20. Fights forward, is two yards shy of a first down. Upfield at the 21-yard line. The quarterback, senior Mike Riley, stopped him after a gain of six. And credit the sophomore from Chipley, Florida, with keeping those legs charting. Watch number 41 in green and Riley, 50-plus tackles last year. Amp does a good job of eluding the first guy, but you don't get away from Riley. 54 tackles last year, 12 tackles for the, through the first three games. And uh, he stops and brings up about uh, second and two, third and two, excuse me. Two tight ends in the game. Marvin Farrell is inserted from Florida State, third and two. Swinging it out of the backfield, this is Edgar Bennett, a foot race, first down. Across the 25, but up to the 28-yard line. He can turn on the speed when he has to. Can Edgar Bennett. See Billy Sexton there, the backfield coach, shouting instructions. Nothing real fancy. Spoke with Mark Rick, the quarterback, before the game. He was telling me about going out and visiting with the San Francisco 49ers, and one of the things he brought back was getting the fullback more involved in the passing attack, uh, not just screens, and they're utilizing Bennett, the junior out of Jacksonville. They see Billy Sexton, the running back coach, been with uh, Coach Bowden and his staff for about 15 years now, former quarterback at Florida State. Quick pitch, the flyer, first down. He's a gutty little receiver. 5'10 out of Live Oak, the red shirt freshman. The coaches were concerned in talking to the offensive coordinator, Brad Scott, today that Tulane would jam the receivers. And Fryer, just a freshman, might have trouble getting off the jam, as the coaches said. Well, he's got good quickness, this Fryer. He doesn't possess great speed. And Brad Scott, as you were talking about, alluding to the trouble he might have. But he's got good quickness and uh, experience to help him get off that line even faster. With a 10 0 lead operating from his 40 yard line in the third quarter, Johnson has it complete. Again, the Fryer, a tough catch. Count 
the green jerseys around him. When you come across the middle, you better have both chin straps buckled. Fryer did, and he held on to the football, a gain of 17. Burton, the outside linebacker, McCollum in the corner, both hitting hard. Three catches coming into the night. You're going to see a good deep drop by Johnson and a good pass and a good route. And Fryer concentrating, watching that ball all the way in. Three green shirts all around him. Mr. Catch. Three catches for 52 yards. And he's to the top of your picture. Dossie to the bottom. And play. Off the play action. Bennett all along. First down and more. Down the sidelines. Inside the 25. Inside the 20. It's a touchdown, Florida State. He never went out of bounds to Edgar Bennett. 40. Four yards. Few can break tackles, as can Edgar Bennett, and he showed you there. That's his third receiving touchdown of the season. You see him just working out to the right there. You're going to see good individual effort. He just outruns a couple of folks, tiptoes there on the sidelines, good cut back inside. Look at Fryer just trying to stay out of the way. Bennett, 44 yards to pay dirt. Andrews to have the point after. It's a Football game. Brad Johnson to Edgar Bennett. And the doors are open here in the Superdome. 1035 remaining in the third. Watch the tackles broken by Edgar Bennett. Good. Pat Stanton, the linebacker, 56. That's one of them. McCullum, the corner, number 25, is two. Mike Riley, the other corner, number 41, was three. And it's a touchdown for double twos. And a good, good read by Brad Johnson to get rid of the ball quickly, capping that six play. 87 yards with the, uh, with the clip on the punt return. Just over two minutes in the drive. Brad Johnson hit four in a row. Including that 44-yard catch and run by Bennett. He's now thrown for 103 yards. Terrence Strickland. Brandon Hamilton. A short kick. Strickland scoops it up at the 10. Fights to the 20. Out to the 23-yard line. John Weich made the stop, and someone came down on his back. I think Tulane Sean Fagan fell on him, and Weich is a little slow to get back to his feet. Florida State a little bit weak at the safety position with John Davis at home in Tallahassee. White's there grasping it looked like his left arm. Aaron Smith again will remind you has missed four in a row. In fact there's only two for his last seven and add to that interception. Here comes the blitz. Dancing outside Harold Dennis. Running 35, 38-yard line, a first down. A fresh set of legs in the sophomore. And he turns that into a 16-yard gallop. Miller out last week. Dennis came in out of the one-back set, rushed 15 times for 91 yards right here in the Dome against Southern Miss. And there you see why. As you say, a fresh set of legs and good explosiveness. And uh, Tulane's off and running on the first drive of the first uh, play of this series. Terrell Buckley has been replaced at the corner by Corey Fuller, a freshman. And Tommy Henry is also in the game for Errol McCorby at the other corner. Whoa! What a play! Howard Dinkins, who exploded off the line of scrimmage to make the big tackle for a loss of five. There you see what we talked about earlier. Watch the Florida State defensive linemen, all of them moving right. There's a stunt on. Everybody's going right. Deacons gets upfield, actually crashes upfield, and just kind of sorts them out once he gets back there in the, in the backfield. 6'2", 220 pounds out of Jacksonville. He went right through the tight end, Jonathan Pierce, and grabbed Strickland. Tackle them both. Buckley and McCorvey return now to duty, so they were out of snap. Lost a five second and 15 from over the formation. Smith to the boundary. Ferdinand misread the routes. 
Let's go down to the sidelines of Mary Milligan. While the touchdown pass to Edgar Bennett proved that great coaches never stop learning. In the offseason, Bobby Bowden sent quarterback coach Mark Rick out to the San Francisco 49ers camp to learn how they use their running backs in a passing scheme. It's working beautifully. Edgar Bennett proving to be one of the most versatile backs in all of college football and a leading receiver on the Florida State team. You mentioned the 49ers. I looked at the numbers through two games. It's uncanny. Tom Rathman, the starting fullback for the 49ers, had 10 catches in two games. Edgar Bennett, 11 catches in two games coming into this contest. And it's a big night for Edgar. Oh, Smith can scramble, 35-36. He was nearly a seminal sandwich, the crashing outside pressure. And he stepped up, and the linebacker, Kirk Carruthers, Good. Ended that scramble. Watch Reggie Freeman there, Keith. Freeman number 99, or Anthony Moss number 99, Freeman 97, both coming from the outside, overrun it just a little bit, but Carruthers number 45 there to mop up. Well, Kirk will remain in on the punt return team. Buckley with the Knowles leading 17 to nothing in the third set of the field. Chip Clark's effort. He gets it away. A diving effort. Nearly blocked it. Here's Buckley right near the boundary. Jukes once, out of bounds. The punt sailed 40 yards with about a five-yard return for Terrell. There's 8.29 remaining in the third. A touchdown by Edgar Bennett from the Brad Johnson. Flare out amply with the first quarter score. Add to it a couple of PATs and a field goal by Richie Andrews. And in the interim, some tough catching by Matt Fryer there in your picture including that 17-yard post pattern. And uh, Florida State very methodically, Keith Jones, leading as we see. Well, most coaches will tell you the first five minutes of the third quarter are very important. And uh, Florida State, as you see, 829 left here in the third, winning those five minutes in this particular contest. Bennett, the up back. Sean Johnson takes the uh, pitch and is wrapped up and all down at the 27 for no gain on the play. Senior Leroy Brown, the right end said how do you do Brown 6 2 256 meeting Sean Jackson at 6 2 220 and those extra 36 pounds won on this particular occasion Sean Jackson said he's always wanted to play in the dome he's now carried the ball three times for 14 yards I doubt if he anticipated big bad Leroy Brown taking him down yeah, no, yeah, no. And handling him like that that make a pretty good song wouldn't it Johnson up top, wide open Lawrence Tossi, and spinning inside for more. Across midfield and in the Green Wave territory at the 48-yard line. Burton and Thornhill on the tackle for Tulane. Tossi almost like he knows where people are, kind of like a quarterback sitting in the pocket. You're going to see him. He's going to cut all the reception off now. He's a runner. He knows exactly where everybody is. Watch him plant, try to cut back hard inside knowing that he had the catch, nobody near him, and immediately converting the, to the running mode after he makes the reception. First and 10 for the Knowles, up by 17 points. Sean Jackson, hammer again. After a gain of one, Pat Stant, the rugged inside linebacker, was there first. Vincent Mulmore, another senior inside linebacker, hit him second. When we talk about inside linebackers for Tulane, Paul, you're going to have to say senior. Stanton Ryder, the starters are senior. Mulborn and Shearer, the backups are seniors. We mentioned that in the first, first half. A lot of experience in the interior position there. Second down and nine. Jackson. Jackson, rather. Bobbled the football. It bounced right back up to him. Brown and Baptiste. Michael Baptiste, Baptiste. right tackle. Hold him down. It's been a rough homecoming, has it not? For the New Orleans native and Jackson. Not a good exchange here. Looks like the Johnson puts the ball in there nicely, but Jackson doesn't wrap it up. It actually does not go down on the turf, hits his knee and bounces back up to him. But you're exactly right, not having the numbers he had last week here in the dome tonight. Flyer to the bottom of your picture, Dossie up top. You see the eight-man front, and now they drop off. Pressure, Johnson hit as he releases, and what a great grab by Reggie Johnson, the tight end at the 33-yard line. 
That was an all-American catch by the senior three-year letterman from Pensacola. Well, there's no doubt that uh, Reggie Johnson can play. There's two players right there in your screen, Johnson and Dawson. Great turns back to his left to catch the ball. A good throw by Johnson. You couldn't see it in the pitcher, but Brad Johnson having the leading back out that way because of linebacker in line of fire, if you will. Uh, not inside your pitcher, but up nearer to the line of scrimmage. Leroy Brown of Tulane gave Johnson a shot. Burton blitzing this time. Ampley takes it in the front on the player. 25, 20, down the boundary and shoved out of bounds by Mark Thornhill. A penalty marker is on the green carpet, too, at the 19-yard line. Amp kind of broke onto the scene against Tulane last year. You'll remember a, a 88 yard reception from Weldon. We're going to get a good look here at, uh, at the call. Got a holding. That sometimes Paul will, will break it open for you. We'll get a look at it here. Look on the left hand side of your screen. Lee breaks out to his left. Johnson does a good job of getting the ball away. Going to be difficult. Not a lot of players in the screen. Breaks a tackle there. Not sure where the penalty comes from. Bobby's, Bobby's asking about it. A hold, he says. And it was thrown from the far side of the field, I think, is what upset him. That's the fourth penalty of the game to go against Coach Bowden's nose. They've been penalized for 43 yards. The football now rests at the two-lane, 29-yard line. And it's a first down and six situation. Just for the record, for those that keep track of such things, the graphics said 198 wins. Bowden actually with 197 looking for 198. Just anticipating, are we, in the truck? Amply great grab. And he can't spin away from Rod McDowell. That's a tough guy to bring down in an open field. And uh, McDowell, who has nearly equally quick feet, stayed right with Amp. Who will forget, you mentioned it earlier, the way he exploded on the college football scene with that little screen pass from Casey Weldon last year, racing 88 yards. He's just lying on his feet with grace and the ability with quick hands to hold on to a tough catch. Well, number one, very few people tackling the first shot. Number two, no one gets a very good shot on him. He's the tailback in the eye. It's second and short. Dances outside. He's going to lose yardage. Vincent Molmer, the rugged senior inside linebacker, on the stop. He looks like a linebacker. That he does. Six foot, 237 pounds. We're going to look at it as uh, Amp was looking at it, or at least look at him as he worked on it. Nothing the tailback can do right here. Molmer just defeats the block and gets in the backfield, ties Amp up uh, before he can even get started. Had 23 tackles last year playing in a reserve role behind Pat Stant right now, but seeing a lot of playing time. A loss of one, setting up third and two. Florida State in a third down situation here. Lee with speed to the outside. To the 20 and the 19-yard line. Easily earning the first down. Riley, the fine corner, made the ankle-high tackle. He picked up 10. Here's your 10th play of the drive. Third and two, what do you want to do? You get outside just a little bit, but then break it back inside and pick up that first down yardage. Just five on the game, but that was the 10th play of the drive. The Knowles have it going, leading 17 to nothing in the third. Oh, tough yards inside for Paul Moore. There are 22 players on the field, that time 21. <laughs> We're going at about half speed for a while. The lone exception was Paul Moore. Everyone expected him to go down, and he did. You know, when the fullback gets up in there, as the coaching staff is playing, looks on, you know, up there crawling around on his hand, almost on the knees, still chugging along, crabbing along. You, you're almost quitting. Coach Davis there and his staff looking on, and no whistles, so Paul Moore kept going and picked up about three. Just over three minutes to go in the third. Here is Moore off the left side. Hard hit by McDowell and the tackle. The football pushed inside the 15, however. And third down approaches. McDowell giving up about 50 pounds. You see Billy Sexton telling you, get up field, Paul. Get up field. Don't be running sideline to sideline or what coaches say east to west. You want to run north and south, which is up field. 
Again, a third down snap here for FSU, which is five for ten in that department. To the near side, Dossie. To the far side, Fryer. The back split behind Johnson. Third and four. Up top he goes, and it's batted down. Mulmer was there. And Darren McGowan, a Florida native from Merritt Island, whose sister used to attend Florida State. In fact, won a letter as a member of the ladies' basketball team. It's Florida native Darren McGowan who put that paw up and knocked it down. Well, he's uh, becoming accustomed to big plays. He picked up a fumble last week and rambled 17 yards for a touchdown against SMU. He's going to get high in the air with his left hand, all six foot four of him, and bat it down. The Knolls on fourth down are going to go for the first, leading 17 to nothing. They dispatch Fryer and Dawson. And here comes Dawson in motion. Out of the backfield lane. Oh, wide open. First down. Inside the five to the four yard line. As if they've been keeping that ace up their sleeve. Brian Ryder, the linebacker, came over. The play was not well defensed by Tulane. They were out of defensive position, Keith, from the snap of the ball. Twin receivers to the top. Dalsey and the re wide receiver, Matt Fryer, come inside, leaving everything wide open to the outside. And Lee able to get out quickly. Brad Johnson delivering the ball upfield, able to convert that fourth down. And now first and goal on about the fourth. The war champ begins the Seminole fans in the north end zone. A gain of 11. Here comes the 15th snap of this march, and it is Lee hunting his second touchdown of the game. Driving to the two. Ryder, the linebacker, made the tackle. 11th carry for Lee on the night. About 56, 57 tough yards. You can tell you about it right now, too. Excuse me, 46 yards. I will say this. Tulane hits. They play hard. It's obvious they're simply out man. But we'll reiterate, this is about as well as the Green Wave can play. Second and goal. Inside more. Spinning, fighting, close, and he breaks the plane. They don't get him the touchdown. Whistling him dead at the one-foot line. You see the mark from the line jump. I'm going to say that the momentum stopped, even though he was not really down. The momentum was stopped. That constitutes being down. And Florida State will have to snap it again. That Green Wave defense, when you when you can put those eight people up there and they're used to playing up there, Paul, they can really get after it. Nothing fancy. Hand off to Moore. Struggle, 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 turn. They're going to whistle him down right there. And then he tries to burst through and get the ball across. He's going to mark it at the one foot line. Johnson dives. Johnson scores. Touchdown, Florida State. The longest march for Florida State in three games in this still young 1990 season. Earned six for the junior quarterback. Johnson at 6'6", six, six, doesn't have to do a whole lot, just kind of step back and try to get over from one yard out, gets in for his second rushing touchdown. See him go slightly to his right there, trying to just get a little angle or a little seam. When you're down that close ball, you don't have to go real far. Johnson to hold for Richie Andrews. The snap, the spot, the kick, and Florida State's lead blossoms to 24 to nothing. Timeout on the field. 30 seconds remain in the third quarter here in the Superdome in New Orleans. The SAEs are here, <laughs> as you see, and so is second ranked Florida State. 24 to nothing, your score, and uh, in twin safeties again Brandon Hamilton to the left of your picture the freshman and the junior Terrence Strickland up top who wears number six on his back and Richie Andrews who has totaled six points in this game three extra points in the field goal booms it away he hit it a tuck on one bounce this is out of the end zone well I did my job says Andrews Look at this drive, Keith. This was a march. Longest of the season by play count, 15 plays, 73 yards, almost eight minutes. Brad goes over on the quarterback sneak from one yard out. First two drives of the third quarter, Florida State able to march considerable distance, putting uh, the 14 third quarter points as posted on the Superdome's massive 
massive scoreboard. Florida State was still a four back secondary an eye formation for the first time in this game. Smith throws Miller who was open caught it and stumbles out of bounds. Had Miller not stumbled he probably had another 15 or 20 yards to move up field. They've really utilized this five nine fullback if you will you see him sprinting out of there and he just he runs away from Dinkins looks like Dinkins stumbles and falls look at the green space the master turf or Superdome turf if you will ahead of I like what Barry Milligan called it the Mardi Gras the Mardi Gras <laughs> I like that and the Knowles of course this is their only game this year on turf and they don't practice on Astro turf still trying to grow accustomed to it Miller ahead to the 30 to 31 I think he about wore himself out in the first half Keith could be the, the book on him is he's very durable he's in great shape but uh, when you've got Ostrzewski and Dinkins and Carruthers and Jones and the rest of them pounding on you 19 times in the first half and another three or four or five carries here in the third quarter that's going to take its toll this Florida State defense really performing well last week defense coordinator Mickey Andrews saying maybe we're finally seeing the seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and maybe coming together as we as we wind down the third quarter here. This one is three quarters done and it's Florida State up 24 to nothing and hunting its first shutout of this new decade back with the fourth period right after this. Welcome to the fourth quarter it's first and 10 2 lane trailing Florida State 24 to nothing. Harold Dennis works the short side of the field. Corey Fuller the freshman quarterback makes the stop. Let's go downstairs again to our pal Barry. Well Paul 24 points by the Seminole offense but give this one so far to the FSU defense coming into this ball game, Tulane had had back to back games in which they had gained 200 yards rushing and passing. But since the first quarter the Seminole D has shut the Green Wave offense down. Tulane has not been shut out we're told in 142 consecutive games. That's one of the longest streaks going in all of college football. But it's in danger here tonight. Smith with the adjustment at the line of scrimmage to Terrence Strickland who spurts off the right side and earns the first. He saw the hole and picked up a step. Joe Ostaszewski the junior nose guard slid down the line of scrimmage and made the stop. Joe who wears number 75 along with his brother Henry who wears 74. Joe with 16 tackles coming into the ball game in 1990. See Bryce Abbott there, number 23, also getting some playing time. First down again. Twin receivers and Ferdinand and Jerry Urson, the bottom of your picture, looking this way. Smith guns to the boundary. Urson holds on to it. The 46 stays in bounds. We're seeing Florida State in its linebacking core and in its secondary. Dip into its reserves now, although a senior, a three year runner, and Anthony Moss, number 99, came all the way over into the flat and made the stop. Coming right at you. Good job by Moss. Not a very difficult pass pattern. Did Urson Jerry run? But Moss able to keep it to a very short gain, about four yards, and that's good mobility from 6'4, 240 pound, quote unquote, defensive end. Tommy Henry is in the game. LeVon Brown in the game for Florida State. A couple of sophomores in that secondary. Smith working on second and six. Nearly had it picked off by John Weish. The reserve strong safety, although a senior. Twice tonight, between Reagans and Weish, that strong safety position, formerly manned by Keith Jones, nearly earned a pickoff. Great read by Weish. You're going to see him work left to right on your screen. Just breaks on the ball. There in time, it just kind of goes right through his hands. Mickey Andrews, uh, defensive coordinator as well as backfield coach, uh, maybe looking at some ball drills during practice next week for these safeties. Forty percent efficiency in that department for Tulane on third and six. Smith with lots of time, and this one is picked off. Climbing the ladder, Errol McCarvey, the junior, with his first interception of the year. I think Darren Smith is stunned that McCarvey could get up that high. 
When McCorvey's six foot, Smith wishes he had this one back. Double coverage, good bump and underneath coverage, a safety behind, and McCorvey just does a good job of sinking his hips and working outside. Gets up high in the air, brings it down for his interception. See the double coverage, corners underneath, safety behind, going into double coverage. Well, at least that salvages some part of this afternoon for the McCorvey family, for Errol's brother plays for LSU in their secondary. And you know what happened to the Tigers at Vanderbilt today? They were stunned. Here's Chris Parker with his first carry of the 1990 season. Parker, the junior, who had a big year a couple of years ago. There's Errol McCorvey in there. That was a stunner, was it not, Keith, in the SEC? That, I believe that makes LSU 0-3 uh, or 1-2. 1-2, they beat Georgia. Beat Georgia, now 1-2. There you see Deron Smith uh, on the phone saying, what happened up there, guys? Parker, who has been in and out of the doghouse with Coach Bobby Bowden, trying to work his way back into playing time. Over the middle, senior Dave Roberts held on to it. Casey Weldon, as you see, returns to duty. And there is a penalty marker down. Holding. And with Florida State leading as it is by three touchdowns plus, although the line is intact, we are going to see, I would think, more and more fresh jerseys for FSU as the Seminoles, a very young team, especially one ranked so high as probably the youngest team in America ever to be ranked as high as only, second in the nation. Only six seniors on the squad, three Ooh. on offense, two on defense, and uh, Richie Andrews <laughs> as the kicker, actually five on the first 22 either side of the ball. You see Coach Bowden there discussing this holding call. No, Coach Bobby Bowden can move past Dan McGugan in all-time wins tonight, the former great coach at Vanderbilt. They were a powerhouse in the 20s and 30s. That's Bobby Bowden. It's milestone after milestone this season. Parker fakes the reverse. And that's going nowhere at the 31-yard line. Linzer Burton, the converted defensive back from Boca Raton, led the way for Tulane. Ray Benford, that big right end, helped out. You're going to see a good job by number five in green, Burton. He's going to keep outside leverage. He's not going to let anybody get in his way. He's not going to let Parker beat him outside. He's going to force him back inside. And not only that, he's going to wrap him up, not let go, and get a little help on the end, but be in on the tackle. That was a loss of two for a fella in Parker who last year carried uh, 32 times for close to a four-yard average. He is now in the slot. Shannon Baker, the wide out at the bottom of your picture. It's third and a long. 17 and penalty markers again down we've seen Brad Johnson and then Casey Weldon and then Brad came back and then Brad again to start now Casey and sounds like the offensive count snap count cadence as it were confusing some people in Florida State uh, jumping get a look at it here hard to tell from that angle who it was but the officials right on top of it moves Florida State back five there you see six of them for 58 yards against Florida State. Well, third and even longer now. 22 yards to go. The Seminoles must get it all the way up to their own 48-yard line, and they're operating here, as you see, from the 26. So they'll run the delay apart to trying to find running room. Burton hits him first, and the second shot is offered by Jay Rink, the defensive end, and Florida State will put the ball away. 10.35 away from the finish line. And you know, the crowd is giving Tulane's defense a fine hand, and well, they should. For the Green Wave has played very respectably tonight against Florida State. Here's John Wimberley. Oh. Fair catch called for by Strickland. He makes it at his 37. A pause in the action will step aside as well. Florida State leading Tulane in the Dome, 24 to nothing. We are back, and on his back is Darren Smith with freshman linebacker Ken Alexander, all 248 pounds of him, hanging on. 
little flea flicker. Going to hand off up the middle, turn around, pitch it back to Smith, looking downfield. But Alexander Paul, a freshman, he's he's not been here long enough to know you're not supposed to just continue upfield to go after the quarterback, and he's right there to make the play. He wasn't fooled at all. That's a loss of a dozen yards. Alexander, is this a Texan for you? Number one, he's from the capital city of Austin, and he attended LBJ High School. You don't get much more Texan than that, do you? I wonder if he wears boots. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> On second and 22, Smith guns battery. Has it complete? Upfield to the 38-yard line. That is not the first down marker. On the receiving end for Tulane is Steve Ballard, the wide receiver. Watch this shot by Grady Ross. Ross is going to come up, deliver a good shot. And he's going to get some help. Kind of horse collar him, if you will. Richard Coase, the freshman from Miami, number 16. Both teams into the bench. It's Ballard's fifth catch of the year, the sophomore. We watch the clock, a shape pass, nine minutes remaining. Third down and nine from the 38-yard line. The pass is caught by Ferdinand. He is just shy, it looks like, of the first down. It depends on the spot. He took the pass in, looked at the first down marker, and Leon Fowler arrived. Again, this combination round, outside receiver works upfield and in. Ferdinand just works out. Fowler, coming from his free safety position, does a good job of closing. They're going to be just a little bit short. Brings up fourth down. There you see a good look at Ferdinand. Less than a yard here. Ferdinand, a good night. To the left side. Jerry Urson to the far. The long setback. Chance Miller takes the handoff. Earns the first. Marvin Jones, the inside linebacker, came up in the hole, but not before Miller had already picked up the first down. At 5'9", he runs so low to the ground. Watch him get his shoulders down. Tries to attack underneath the defender. This time he goes head up with Marvin Jones. Marvin gets a little bit under him, but doesn't wrap up. Miller bounces off a couple more yards first down to lane. There you see, 22 times, 80 yards. Trust me, they've all been tough. There's been a hit at the end of every one of those rushes. And you're running against FSU. He'll be a sore young man tomorrow. Smith near midfield. Boy, he put some mustard on that one. Looking for Roy Erson, and then Terrell Buckley put some mustard on Erson. He fired a fastball. That's almost an impossible pass to hold on to. Well, there's no doubt that uh, Smith can deliver it. No pushing and shoving going on there. There at the end. No doubt that Smith can deliver the football. 6'4, 217 pounds. See him standing there by Chance Miller. Towers over him. He winds up and lets it go. It's got some velocity on it. He's been picked off twice. Is now 10 of 20 for 70 yards. Second down, and he needs. Not even 10. Over the middle, incomplete. Trying to find Miller circling out of the backfield in front of uh, Florida State's Richard Coves in the secondary. Anthony Moss coming free, putting good pressure on Smith that time from his left line, outside linebacker, defensive end, rush position, head in, wheel in, whatever we want to call him. Number 99 there at the top of your screen. That defense wants a shutout. Tulane has not been blank since 1977, as Barry Milligan told you. There are eight minutes even to go in this football game. Third and ten for Smith with time over the middle. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver at the 35-yard line. It looked to be Stanley Barron again out of the backfield. And Florida State's going to get the football back as Tulane will punt. Coming into the game, Buckley averaging 30.2 yards per return. Two of them for touchdown. Florida State is playing as if they expect this to be a fake. It is not. Instead, angling it for the sideline, Clark has Buckley race over, call fair catch, and make the grab at his 14-yard line. 24 to nothing, FSU on top. 
Casey Weldon remains at the helm for Florida State. Late in the fourth quarter, Baker over the football. Weldon takes the snap, sets up, whip ties, fires, and Sean Jackson's troubles continue tonight in New Orleans. Well, he'll certainly learn a lot from this experience, Paul. Just a freshman, we've mentioned it, coming back to hometown. You see Weldon with a nice picturesque drop, five step, stand tall, stand tall, look downfield, deliver it. Uh, there's Jackson doing his Bill Reagan's invitation. <laughs> Jackson needed a lot of tickets for tonight's game. His whole family is here. Weldon, by the way, look at that. That was only the second incomplete pass of the evening for him. Again, Paul Moore is the Seminole who earns the tough yards. He gained a good four. Third down, six yards approaching. And big Reggie Dixon from Pensacola. Number 73, the sophomore split tackle, was the last man up. They've left that offensive line nearly intact. Hayward Haynes played early, Keith, and then slipped out of the lineup that broken hand, but he did start his 15th consecutive game for FSU tonight. Needing six to hold on to the football with seven minutes to go in the game. It's caught, but not a first down for Reggie Johnson, who tries to position the ball ahead as we go back downstairs to Barry Milligan. Well, Paul, you may have noticed the large bandage on Sean Jackson's left hand. He did sustain a cut between the thumb and forefinger on that left hand that required stitches during the halftime. He just had trouble handling the ball. Another youngster who has not had trouble, number 72, Steve Allen, 6'5", 285, a redshirt freshman out of Orange Park, Florida, doing the long snapping tonight. That's because the regular long snapper, number 79, Halp, was left in Tallahassee. He was suspended for one game, but Allen so far has been given an A-plus from the Seminole coaches. He's done his job, and here's the moving punt by Wimberlin. Strickland, 35 40. Open field midfield. Still on his feet, 40. Dodges a tackle at 35. Wimberlin has to take him down at the 30. We'll be back with more from New Orleans right after this. Returned by Terrence Strapun has two lane first and ten at the Seminole 40. And this is Will Anderson inside the 10 yard line. The freshman Buckley on the stop. Here's the punt return again, Pete, by Strickland. Strickland only with seven yards total net return coming into the ball game. Gets 40 plus right here on one. Does a Terrell Buckley just sidesteps and heads up field. Here's a scene pattern, just floating inside his person and moving upfield. Great delivery by Smith. Tulane's knocking on the door. Ballard, Urson up top. Quinn receivers to the bottom of your screen. Four men out into the end zone. Incomplete, the intended receiver was the junior Jerry Urson. As Smith and the Green Wave with 532 remaining in the contest, trail 24 to nothing and are desperate to put something on the board. Florida State bring in about six substitutes, which, uh, by the way, happen to be first-teamers, going with their first-team defense. Trying to pitch the shutout. Again, Ballard. This time, Willie Erson, or Jerry Erson up top. Ferdinand, Willie Erson to the bottom of your screen. Smith steps up and undershoots Ferdinand. It's incomplete. It's third and ten. It's been a tough night, too, at times for Ferdinand. When he's made catches, they've had to been underneath and coming back toward the football. The floor, uh, Tulane, excuse me, has not thrown the ball downfield. Smith and company have not taken the ball downfield. Rather, they, they came out running with Trance, uh, Chance Miller side to side between the tackles, bouncing out when he could, and little dink passes or seam routes and flare routes not going downfield. Ferdinand, Jerry Erson to the top of your screen. On third down. Ferdinand has it tipped away by Billy Reagan. 
A strong safety came up. He had backside help, too, from the other corner. And Errol McCorvey. And it's fourth down. Florida State rolled up in man-to-man -man coverage underneath with two safeties in this particular case. McCorvey playing like a safety. Reagan's in front. Corby behind, and Reagan gets his left hand on it and knocks it out of the way. The chant in the background for Florida State. Timeout taken by Florida State. With 5.23 to go in the game, Darren Smith walks over to talk to his coach, Greg Davis, Mickey Andrews and the defensive staff, Chuck Amato, joining Carruthers. Notre Dame dodges a bullet. Oh boy. 20 to 19. They do it again. Or Florida State would be playing for number one. There is the upset in Nashville today. 24-21. The Commodores of Vanderbilt. The Orangemen and the Panthers play to a 20 all tie. And FSU's next opponent in the Hokies of Virginia Tech are beaten by a team bound now for the SEC in South Carolina. And Georgia hands Alabama its third loss of the year without a win, 17-16 as they rally between the hedges. Tomorrow night, indeed, the Hokies of Virginia Tech in Dope Campbell Stadium. Catch all the action live on Seminole September at 7 o'clock. It is next Saturday night rather than tomorrow night. And at uh, 11 o'clock on Saturday, you can catch the replay. Let's go back downstairs to Barry Milligan. Well, Paul, Tulane has a big decision to make right now. Greg Davis obviously choosing to give his team a chance to get back in the ballgame. This would be a chip shot to avert the shutout. They haven't been shut out, as we mentioned, since 77. But Tulane wants to try and get back in this ballgame by scoring a touchdown here and then possibly recovering an onside kick. Urson Ferdinand with Strickland over that way as well. Three receivers who trips to the far side. On fourth... And goal. Hitters here releases. Incomplete. Blindsided by Reggie Freeman. A crushing pass rush for Florida State. The Knolls have held and will take over on downs. Smith trying to get the ball to Ferdinand. He's going to look inside, break back outside. He's hit. That's why the ball is short. Nice one hop grab, but doesn't count. Butcher and the pressure from the left. Terrell Buckley coming from the left. Number 27 hits Smith right as he delivers. Takes the juice off the ball and it falls short. Yeah, it was not Freeman, but rather Buckley who made the play. Well in the bootleg. Throwing on the run. Intercepted. It's picked off by Tulane's Brandon Hamilton at the 18-yard line. A tough pass to throw, and Kevin Knox, the freshman flank, was the intended receiver. We said that Tulane played well in a man-to-man -man scheme, and Hamilton shows that here. Weldon does a good job of rolling out. This is a ball he should have never thrown. Good coverage, throws it right into coverage. Dawson has to become a defensive back to try to strip it away. Unsuccessful. Tulane's back in business. It was Dossie, rather than Knox, the intended receiver. That is the second interception suffered by Weldon this year. His first tonight. The defense has to go right back out there. Off the left side, Chance Miller exploring for the 12-yard line with five minutes to go in this football game. Barry Milligan, Keith Jones, and Paul Kennedy joining you from the Superdome. Another one. Here's a look at Miller. How many times have we seen it tonight? Just straight ahead for others with an ankle tackle, 23 times, 89 yards. All of them very, very tough. A gain of eight for the rugged scholar from Metairie, Louisiana. Willie Erson left along with Ferdinand. Inside handoff, Dennis flipped and taken down by Troy Sanders. The sophomore defensive tackle from Elba, Alabama. Starting tonight over Carl Simpson in that right defensive tackle slap. Influence block, left guard pulling out to the right. 
Sanders, excuse me, Dennis falling right in there and Troy Sanders not following the guard, able to bring him down. Needing inches. On third down. A football at the 10. Florida State has just held too late, as you know, four straight shots. And then on first down, Casey Weldon flicked the interception intended for Dossie. Mickey Andrews there with the headset on. Jim Gladden to his left, all right. Coach Bowden in the center. Andy Orbitz, the trainer, looking on. Strickland with the play from his head coach, Greg Davis. Relayed to Smith, the quarterback. Jerry Erson on the wing right side. Short yardage formation. Strickland and Miller from the 10. It's Miller to the 5 or 4 yard line. What blocking. Atkins and Millich on the right side for Tulane. McCorby the cornerback on the stop for Florida State. Atkins at 288, Millich at 267, open up a nice seam and Miller able to just squeeze right through it. Converts the first down to Lane, first and goal. We'll call it uh, four and a half yard line. He will become the first back if he picks up four more yards, Will Miller, to rush for 100 against Florida State this year. 3.43 to go in the game. Florida State leads 24 to nothing. Dennis trying to stiff arm his way outside, and he can't get away from Kurt Carruthers. Kurt Carruthers, a rugged guy who two weeks ago played 73 snaps and had 13 tackles. And last week, they say he played even better with less extensive duty. Does a good job on the, what we used to call the scrape technique, scraping outside of his defensive tackle, not getting picked off by an offensive lineman, and able to cut down in a proper pursuit angle to bring the back down for a loss. Kirk and company have burned another timeout with 312 remaining. FSU up 24 to nothing. Chuck Amata, the center of your screen, defensive line coach, Jim Glatton, the outside linebackers coach. Join us Monday evening for the Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine. Lewis Oliver will join us, as will Tony Page, that rugged fullback who caught a touchdown pass from Dan Marino a week ago. Tomorrow, those guys and Don Shula's Dolphins go head to head with the New York Giants. That ought to be quite some game in the Meadowlands, and we'll be along to talk about it at 7 o'clock live Monday night on Sunshine Network. Nikki Andrews with the headset on. In the baseball camp right behind Jim Gladden. He's been to battle a few times for the state's defensive coordinator. Great, great coaching staff there. Mickey leading them. Great, great people and great coaches. Been together for five, six, seven years now. Working well together. There you see Ron Smith with his coaching brain trust. The numbers haven't been that spectacular for Smith tonight, but. Uh, you can see that he has talent. The play clock is down to seven as he comes up to the line of scrimmage. So he's going to have to hustle on second and six. He won't get it away. They'll whistle it dead. You can hear the whistles up here. The flag went down. The pass is incomplete, but the ball will be brought back. He never saw the play clock. They broke the huddle. They started the play clock early. There you see the delay of game fall. And Ron did not pick up on it. You can see that. He's frustrated either at himself or at the fact that it began early. You've got to pay attention to the little things, especially on timeouts and, and breaks, because the 25-second clock begins when the referee signals it, not when you get back to the huddle, not when you're ready, but when they're ready. Now becomes second and goal from the 11-yard line. On the near side hash, Jerry Erson along with Steve Battle. Dispatch to the top of your screen. Willie Erson, Melvin Ferdinand to the bottom. Miller the long setback for Smith. Going into the end zone, and it's battled away, incomplete. Leon Fowler was there. The intended receiver was Jerry Erson. Errol McCorvey, along with Fowler, there in double coverage. Five straight incomplete passes forced by that Florida State secondary. Well, again, a, a Florida State safety wishing he had a second chance. Again, also, Smith going into double coverage. Fowler's going to snake across and get his hands on it. McCorvey right there to bat it back away from the receiver. Two Florida State 
defensive backs with their hand on the ball. They see Fowler just a sophomore. That secondary has played so well down the stretch that on third down, we can tell you, Smith is only one for his last nine. So he's going to keep it on the ground. Here is Dennis. Back to the four in the three-yard line. Fowler is there. Weish is there. The clock winds under. Three minutes to go in this football game. Florida State will win it. Right now, the only matter of doubt is whether or not Tulane will be shut out for the first time since 1977. Again, Coach Davis uh, apparently selecting or choosing to go for it. Fourth and four. There you see the clock, 2.30 running. Play clock again under 10. Three receivers to the near side. Urson, Ferdinand, Strickland. It's fourth and goal. Strickland catches it. Dives touchdown. The eighth play following the interception earns the first score of the night for Tulane. Well, Strickland started from a wing position, third receiver in, Florida State and bump and run, and Buckley not getting off the man in front of him, not able to get off quick enough to cut down that angle, and Strickland out of the backfield, the junior out of Shreveport, brings it in, touchdown to Lane. A four-yard scoring pass. Strickland's first catch of this football game is good for six, and the extra point is added by tiny Gary Butler. The young sophomore, and it's 24 to 7. With two minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the game. And Tulane, we had said at the outset of our telecast, had regained its self-respect under third-year head coach Craig Davis. And I think they certainly showed us something tonight, Keith, in the fourth quarter. Well, that they have. Davis been on staff. You remember Mac Brown was here three years ago. Uh, Florida State... Uh, alumnus or affiliate if you will and Davis had been on staff during his three years as a quarterback coach stepped up as the head coach Smith throws this ball off the back foot but it doesn't matter he gets it out quickly to Strickland and Buckley just not able even with his great speed to close that quickly Tulane puts six and then converts to put seven on the board Smith had missed five in a row through the air had hit only one of his last nine before teaming in the flat with Strickland. Almost a page from the Florida State playbook. Well, Tulane using that one back set, running the ball the majority of the time in the first, first half, coming out in the third quarter doing the same, but then opening it up. And as you say, a la Florida State, throwing the ball to their backs and being successful at it. Anticipating the onside kick. Gary Butler stands all of 5'6", 145 pounds. He booms it along the ground and takes the big high bounce and is recovered by FSU. Florida State will take over at the two-lane 46-yard line. And the Seminole who gets up off the bottom of that pile is Warren Stussing. So when you have an onside kick situation you put your skill people up there you didn't see very many offensive tackles or defensive linemen you put your backs and your receivers up there Dawson filling in on his kickoff return onside duties steps forward brings it in falls down Florida State in operation at the to lane 45 speedy sophomore Eric Terrell to the top of your picture for the first time tonight nearly as fast Shannon Baker to the bottom of your screen Walden wants to throw the football so it does. This is Amblin at the 40 and out of bounds. A gain of five. In Florida State's scheme of things, they pick up six, seven yards throwing to their backs. And they're averaging close to five yards a carry on the ground on the season. It's just so effective when you can get a guy with speed like they have in Bennett and Lee and Sean Jackson. Now Chris Parker starting to see duty in the flat, in the open field. Well, those six and seven yard passes are just like handoffs. Oh, that's why it brings statistics better and almost at 70 percent completion. On second and six, Lee's wide open out of the backfield. Inside the 20 to the 15 market at the 11 yard line. Sheldon McCullum, the cornerback, 
runs him down. That's a gain of 29 yards. With Lee, it happens so quickly, almost effortlessly. Lining up in his tailback position and then sometimes lining up as a wide receiver. You see the one back set. He's just going to run the old flag route. Run downfield, cut to the left, Amp. Great delivery by Weldon. A lot of confidence and a lot of touch on that throw ball. 159 remaining in the football game. Florida State first and 10 with that 24 to 7 lead at the two lane seven yard line. I get into the air timing route for the corner and he overshoots Shannon Baker. The intended receiver there defensively for Tulane was Brandon Hamilton, the freshman quarterback. Tough catch, tough throw. Florida State on the left hash. Baker trying to work inside, but still looking over his inside shoulder. The ball is almost coming at him, almost having to look completely head on a swivel, completely back to the quarterback. Weldon a little high with it. Florida State's next game against the Hokies of Virginia Tech next Saturday night. The next week we'll find Tulane at Ole Miss, which won today over Arkansas. And here is Terrell. E.T. has scored. The sophomore slants over the middle and ignites a celebration. Tallahassean to Tallahassean. T.C. Weldon out of North Florida Christian and Eric Terrell out of Godby High School, I believe it is, in Tallahassee. You see him working right to the left there. A little high route, a little under route. Weldon does a good job of delivering the ball and E.T. in for six from 11. Remember last year, the first time Ann Blee touched the football, he scored? Well, Terrell here touches it for the first time and scores. A very short four-play, 44-yard offensive effort. 26 seconds off the clock, 31 to 7. Florida State. And there will be good times. They shall roll in New Orleans tonight. Down on, uh, how did they say it? Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street. There you see E.T. Very affable, very likable, very popular with his teammates, very outspoken, very, very good uh, communication and personality skills, almost uh, star quality already from a PR standpoint. Weldon hurling his second touchdown pass of the season, his first in this game. That's good for Casey, too, to... Uh, Wash the bitter taste of that interception. Exactly. He'll go back and look at that film on that interception when Tulane converted to their score, and, and he'll know he should have thrown the ball up in the cheap steaks or tucked it under and run with it. But uh, those are learning processes. Those are things that Casey, if he is, uh, he is of the character that the coaches know that he is of, that he'll take to heart and he'll use his lessons never to be repeated. And for those of you concerned with moral victories that may wonder why did Florida State throw rather than running it out. Once your opponent has onside kicked it. All rules are off. And you play to score and that's what Florida State did. Andrews. Drive Strickland the yard deep. Here comes Terrence. The 10. The 15. Cuts outside right 20. Foot race 25 ahead of the 30. 35 and belted out of bounds. 40-yard line. Let's go back downstairs to Barry. Well, Paul, the Tulane bench absolutely irate that Florida State came back and scored that touchdown. The players shouting all kinds of things across the field at their counterparts. But as you say, all rules off once you go for the onside kick. That has been the Bowden philosophy all along. And at this point in the game, Bowden does not want Casey Weldon to get gun shy in any way. The time on the clock had no effect whatsoever in the play calling. Thanks, Barry. Florida State will stand 3-0. It's number two ranking in America, preserved behind Notre Dame. And Tulane will stand at 500 in another one minute and 39 seconds at two and two. First and 10, eluding the rush. Smith underneath short and kaboom. Bryce Abbott corrects the receiver, Stanabare. There's a linebacker, the sophomore from Tifton, who'll hit you. You're going to see Bryce settling number 23 in the middle of your screen, Florida State prevent. Bryce is going to zero in on a 2-0 and just level. 
sophomore, as you say, out of Tifton. Six foot, 215, hits like he's about 280. <laughs> Jones, Carruthers, Alexander, Abbott, an excellent four-man inside linebacker in rotation. Smith trying to fire it to the near boundary to Ferdinand, overshoots him with Reagans in pursuit. That leaves with 58 seconds to go in this game. Bobby Bowden will now have that 100 at 98 career win, and Florida State's record will remain unblemished officially through time against Tulane. Yeah, we talked about that. 1983, Florida State came out here, actually lost the ball game. 34-28, uh, 34-26, I believe it was. A couple years, a year after that, uh, Tulane ruled as being, uh, uh, having the forfeit, playing the middle edge of the receiver. Florida State officially 7-0 against the Green Bay. From his 44-yard line, Smith over the middle, incomplete. The intended receiver was Steve Bowden. Near midfield. It will bring up fourth down. A penalty marker is on the carpet at the 48, so we'll wait and see here. Pass interference against Florida State. Boy, if I'm Bobby Bowden, if Bobby Bowden is up here where I am to see that call, <laughs> He's about as upset as I am. That is an absolutely ridiculous official call. Ball's not even catchable. The official about 38 yards away throws the flag. Florida State will win its 13th consecutive game. Correct. The longest current winning streak in all of Division I. Will tie the second longest streak in Florida State history, 1949 to 1951, under Coach Don Bell of Florida State, won 13 straight, and then the team I played on, 78-79, won 15 straight. Florida State doing so, despite the fact it's been a number of penalties tonight, committed a few, and that's a fine catch by Jerry Urson for the Florida State 39-yard line. The junior flanker hauls it in. The clock momentarily halted with 45 seconds to go. Jerry, number two of the Urson Cousins, the junior. Willie, where's number one, the freshman? This is a two-lane team. The clock begins to tick. It's going to have to finish tough. Their final two games are at Syracuse and at LSU with Ole Miss and Southern Miss in the interim. They call timeout with 32 seconds remaining. They will be hard-pressed to finish at the 500 mark. And it's a program that has enjoyed just one 500 season in the last six years. That came uh, under Mac Brown in 87 when they were 6-6. Six and six. But one of the things about Coach Greg Davis there without the hat with the headset is uh, they have always been very productive offensively, always in the top 10 or top 20 in the nation in offensive production largely in part to their quarterback, Terrence Jones, and then now Deron Smith and Davis prior to becoming the head coach, of course, we mentioned the quarterback coach for three years under Mack Brown. So uh, very offensively minded coach, uh, great talent at the quarterback position with Terrence Jones and now Deron Smith and doing very well offensively, if not on the record. Smith with 14 completions tonight and 31 attempts for uh, 111 yards and two interceptions, one touchdown pass. And this game is so vastly different from the 59-9 route we saw last year or the blowout by Florida State two years ago. Although Smith's statistics, if you look at him, Paul, he was 12 of 31 with three interceptions, one touchdown, 113 <laughs> yards yeah, last year. Yeah, now that's just about identical, isn't it? Against the gray, tough pass to throw, and he fires incomplete with 26 seconds remaining. And there is another flag down, and still another as some pushing and shoving took place at the two-way bench, and still another flag. The officials, in trying to maintain rules and decorum, still throwing flags in front of Coach Craig Davis. Got a legal procedure call against Tulane, and then we're going to have one or two dead ball and sportsmanlike conduct calls. Not sure exactly who they'll go against, but one, one flag very, very late. It's been a busy night for referee Fritz Grass tonight here in the Superdome. It's a good thing, Keith, we were indoors. There's a torrential downpour about 6.45 this evening, just prior to kickoff. One of the beauties of, of the Dome, Florida State will now go 6-0 uh, and oh under Coach Bowden indoors. Most of them uh, coming here, the, the lone 
victory coming up the Carrier Dome up in Syracuse. There you see the legal procedure call against Tulane. They'll mark that off first, and then they'll uh, start some real estate one way or the other. <laughs> Coach Bowden saying, look, there are 26 seconds to go. We're leading 31 to 7. Let's finish this game and go home. You can join Gene Decker Hall and Coach Bobby Bowden on the Bobby Bowden Show this Tuesday evening at 7.30. It's always enjoyable. Right here on Sunshine Network, Coach and Gene Gene. Tulane's two-game winning streak will be snapped. Having beaten Rice and SMU. Ferdinand and Jerry Ursi. On first and ten. Time running out. Smith to Jerry Ursi. And down he goes with Reagans on his back. The football spotted at the 23. And Tulane will call timeout with 12 seconds to go. I think at the urging of the home crowd. Well, you can rest assured that uh, Smith is going to go downtown. He's going to try to lay this one out about Poydras Street. <laughs> They, they will they will be going for Pater. Our producer tonight, Tom Hastings. Our stage manager, Bill Oglesby. Joe Sherman, Tom Blake, Tom Black, rather. Helping us up here in the booth. T.L. Grant, too, on our staff this evening. We thank the folks in the Superdome for providing the pictures as well. The Bayou Boosters enjoy having their alma mater here in the Bayou State. You don't think the Florida State faithful ate some shrimp etouffee over the last couple of days, do you? I had mine, some red <laughs> beans and rice. <laughs> Join us next Saturday night live from Doe Campbell Stadium. Frank Beamers, Virginia Tech Hokies in town, Florida State, will arrive on Beaton, ranked second in the nation. Contact your local cable company for Seminole September and pay-per-view or join us at 11 o'clock for the replay. Down the middle, open scoring touchdown. <laughs> Tulane came right back down the field and balanced the score. And took it right to... Kirk Carruthers, number 45. You see Strickland line up there on the wing. Carruthers one-on-one -on -one with him. No way he can stay with him. Good throw by Smith. Watch, uh, watch a, a little bit of a celebration here by Deron Smith. Tom Cool and collected, but nevertheless excited. He hit Strickland the first time, four yards out, with 2.14 remaining in this football game. And now with seven ticks of the clock left, Find Strickland again. That'll add to his stats and make this score far closer in the morning papers. If you're in, uh, if, if you're in Montana and you read the paper in the morning, this doesn't look good. Tulane will go for two. It appears with seven ticks to go. It's taken an eternity to play the final couple of minutes of this football game. Funny things happen in New Orleans, don't they? Well, Florida State, uh, every time coming to the Dome, getting some uh, unusual things going on. <laughs> Most of the time victorious, 83 the lone exception, which, by the way, Coach Bowden and his staff still refers to as a loss, even though officially yeah. Tulane had to forfeit. When you talk to Bobby, he'll talk about coming in here in 1983, Florida State ranked in the top ten, and losing to Tulane, and that being one of the worst big, uh, defeats, surprising upsets, if you will, that Coach Bowden's had in his 15-year career at Florida State. Well, he wants to play here on January 1. He'd love to play two games again this year here. Four receivers will be in the pattern for the two-point conversion. And off the quarterback, Ross Smith will go to the Taken down at the three-yard line. Reggie Freeman came up from behind. And 31-13, uh, the score remains. Of course, that being a two-point conversion, no time will elapse. Seven ticks still on the clock. The faithful here in New Orleans uh, on their feet, proud of the, of the green wave. Two late scores making it uh, 
very, very, or much, much closer than it really was. Time for one more play. The last time we saw Chip Clark out there, there's the scoring drive to 141, the elapsed time. Clark attempted an onside kick. Florida State, of course, recovered, and uh, four plays later was in the end zone. And Shannon Baker, he'll be the lone deep man, and his 10 other Noel teammates will be aligned uh, at midfield. Haven't talked much about the turf. You see Baker there with those elastic knee pads or, or scuff pads if you will this turf very soft here at the superdome but very abrasive players wearing uh, some extra protective clothing everyone up for the onside kick it bounds along deflected grabbed by florida state four seconds remain follow the bouncing ball and see that a gold helmet pulled it down it appeared to be kevin knox the freshman wide receiver, and they are still pushing and shoving at each other. We'll check that. It was not. It was, uh, well, that may have been Casey Well in the quarter. What's a quarterback doing in there? Well, that young man right there may be, he may have the title of quarterback, but he can line up, play defensive end, linebacker, defensive back, running back. Uh, there's, there may not be a bigger competitor, a man with a bigger heart on that Florida State team than Casey Wells. Uh, he's in there on the onside kick receiving team. Time for one more play. And with a clap of the hands, here come the Noles. Both Shannon Baker and E.T. to the top of your picture. And the inside handoff is to Sean Jackson and the New Orleans native gallons. For the 30, the 25 and out of bounds, and he ends this game on a positive note for his home folks from St. Augustine High School in New Orleans. Bobby Bowden's team indeed a winner once again and the king of the road hangs a 31 to 13 verdict in the rafters of the Superdome in New Orleans. Greg Davis and company two and two for Tulane and this was not a bad football game. A lot of action, a lot of scoring. Tonight in New Orleans. Next up for Florida State, Virginia Tech. And for Tulane, as we said, Ole Miss. Casey Weldon saw action, and he shakes the hand of Chance Miller, who, if they ever gave a game ball to a losing club, deserved it. Miller was rugged tonight, Keith. 24 carries for 96 yards, just four shy of that magic three digits, and keeps them close uh, in the first half. And, and uh, I tell you, great performance by Miller. Let's go down to the field where Barry Milligan is standing by with Coach Bobby Bowden. Thank you, Paul. Coach Bowden, uh, strange things seem to happen in this place. A, a strange beginning there, but uh, you're able to hold them until late in the fourth quarter. Oh, the only thing that makes me mad about it is I uh, tried to throw the ball down and we had a shutout work and I wanted our defense to get a shutout because I thought they played great tonight and uh, that's the only negative thing about the whole game. Pretty good balance, though, again. Uh, not bad uh, output from your receivers. Uh, and and four or five yards per carry by your backs. Well, they played a defense tonight that was very that they played a defense tonight that was very conservative. Wouldn't allow us anything big, and uh, we kind of took what was there. It was slow. They they you know we just beat them slowly. Kind of as you expected. They were a little bit better uh, game each week. Tulane a pretty good team. Well, Tulane's much better in my opinion than they were last year. Remember last year we had them 31 to nothing to half. It took us six minutes this week to get the 31 points. Once again, pretty good play from some youngsters. How about Steve Allen coming in a long snap? Did a, a oh, fine job. Steve did a very good job. I was very proud of him. Okay, Coach Bowden, congratulations. Okay. Good luck next week. Win number 198, Paul, for Bobby Bowden. Yeah, he wanted the shutout, too, but he didn't get it. His defense gave up two late scores. Your final this evening in New Orleans. Nonetheless, hey, this one's garnet and gold, 31 to 13.